All right, we're rolling. Welcome to TT Boy TV. Today we have a special guest. I'm thinking probably one of the most experienced producers, directors in the adult history, adult business history, period. Because you've shot so many scenes. I mean, you work all day, every day. Please, everyone, let me introduce Jim Powers. Wild man Jim Powers. Thank you for having me. <laughs> yeah, that means I'm old. <laughs> I've shot a lot. Yeah, thank you for coming. You nice just... setup. Yeah, thank you. You just shot today? I was shooting today. Who'd you shoot? Today we shot Jane Wilde in a cuckold scene, cuckold sessions for Dog Fart. Uh, she did Isaiah Maxwell. And before that we shot, oh my gosh, Arietta in Watching My Daughter Go Black. Huh. And she did a guy named Larkin. Oh yeah? Was it um, uh, hot scenes or was it just pretty mediocre? I would say Isaiah's scene's always good. Yeah. Isaiah's really good. He's a good guy. The other one, eh, so so. Yeah. Okay. He oh. wasn't delivering the wood like Isaiah does, but Isaiah's a pro. Oh, yeah. He's a pro now, huh? Yeah. I remember when he first started, he had an agency and he just started. Right. Right. Yeah, he's really good now. Is he? Cool. He got a little practice, huh? Yeah. He's had a lot of practice. This guy must, he shoots every day. Really? Every day. Wow. Or sometimes great. two times a day. No shit. Yeah. Wow. Well, I like him. He's a nice guy, so. That's good for him. Yeah, he's grown up in porn now. I think he's been around for, what, 10 years? Has he? It's been a while. Really? Wow. He's almost on his way. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> he must be making some money now, huh? He's rolling. That's cool. How much does he charge a scene? Should we be saying that? Yeah, we want to know. <laughs> um, Curious minds. Between 600 and 800. Really? Yeah. And sometimes does two a day. Oh, yeah. Well, that's great. And he pulls up in the nice car. He has his own pad. Yeah, he's doing yeah. okay. Cool. That's good. God bless him. All right, so let's start from the beginning. First of all, where are you from? Well, I'm from Los Angeles, you know, L.A. So oh. I went to high school here at Taft High. Oh, shit. I'm a local boy. Wow. I'm one of the few guys in porn that's actually a local valley guy. You're a valley dude. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's cool. That explains it, why you're so cool. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah, I'm a Val. So So Taft. Where's Taft at again? Corner of Winnet and Ventura. Oh, yeah. Man, I see a lot of girls there. Anyway... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so you're raised in a valley. Well, that's so Woodland when, Hills. Woodland Hills. And how old are you? 57, 56. Fuck. No shit. Yeah. I thought you were younger. No. I got, well, I've been in porn now for what, almost 30 years. Holy moly. That's crazy. You're that old? Wow. Yeah. I totally thought you were younger. No, I, well, I came in as you know, producer originally. Uh -huh. Yeah, I want to get to that, but that's that's wild. So, so you were going, what did, class are you so you're like probably the class of 80 81 81 I'm class of 81 tapped high school yeah did you do good in school no 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 i was very much an average student oh, yeah? classic c student party guy or oh yeah i was in a punk band everything like that no shit i toured yeah oh yeah really oh yeah no shit a punk band wow yeah i'll even show you a picture yeah, of oh please i'm gonna pop up a picture of me what i used to look like i actually well, that is awesome. <laughs> look at that. That is cool. Yeah, stick it up there if you wow, want. Wow, look at that. That is radical. That is a that's some of the best hair I ever saw. <laughs> that's college era. Unbelievable. That is unbelievable. Yeah, we just got wow. back, back from touring the East Coast. I remember. So that's like part of the black flag genre. Yeah, right? during that era, yeah. Yeah. So you played what instrument? Bass. Bass? Yeah, I still play my old punk band. We oh, still play places. Really? I just played the Roxy. I just played the Viper Room. Son of a bitch. That's cool. Yeah. So, I mean, from, my friend ha is in a band. He's, you know, like 50, right? Ooh. My friend Charlie. Okay. Anyway, Charlie Klinger, what's up? CRC Plumbing. Anyways, he um says that when he was, you know, doing the band thing, he still does it once in a while, Right. that there's a lot of girls out there. Yeah, well, that's why I did it back in those days. You would always get Yeah? Oh, yeah, I went right into punk rock, and it was like all of a sudden you had girls overnight. I mean, like before you were just kind of, eh, you know how, how it was. But all uh -huh. of a sudden, tons of one-night stands. It was amazing. Yeah? Yeah, yeah, that's what punk rock was about back then. That is fucking awesome. I mean, that's a dream, right? It's almost yeah. like the porno dream. Exactly. I mean, porno dream is unbelievable, but wow. So how many girls did you think you laid to bed? I'd always have girlfriends, but they didn't last more than a, like a week. 
So I don't know. I mean, it's, I'm not like you. I mean, I'm sure I banged like, I counted like an 85. I think it was with like 25 different girls or something. Some of these years I'd keep track, 84. We're in tour. It'd be in the 20s usually. Uh-huh, per year? Yeah. Uh, but, you know, they'd be your girlfriend for a week or so. And they're so nice, right? So fun. I mean, I remember some of the 80 girls for me are the best. Yeah, so we're talking early 80s. You know, the, but people don't remember how promiscuous it was back then. It was, it was very promiscuous. Yes, and beautiful. People would get drunk just to f and it was, you know, this before, you know, there was no Me Too movement, there was no yeah. cell phones, there was none of this Twitter and Instagram yeah. and Facebook, you wouldn't get in trouble for that. Well, you, you weren't tainted. Yeah, there was no pictures. Nobody took a camera to a party. No. Nobody took a cell phone picture of you doing cocaine. Nobody did this type of stuff back then. No. So. It was so great, right? Yeah, I miss those days. I miss the days where I could leave and not have to worry about a phone call. Yeah. Just... Hey, I'm driving. Hey, I'm over at TT's house. You know, you can't reach me. Yeah, it's beautiful. You know, nowadays they go on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, emails, your phone. Yeah, you're being tracked. You're, you're tracked. And it has GPS. Yeah, that's unbelievable. You're a slave, really. Yeah, we're all slaves to it. Yeah, it's a, I mean, I, I'm crazy, but I think it's like an alien virus, but you know. It is. But, yeah. but yeah, I mean, the 80s, man, so... The girls, I know, I remember sometimes when the girls, if they liked the way you looked, they smiled, and they just wanted to have fun. Okay, here's like an 80s story. I'm in this band. I had blonde hair. We're bleach blonde hair, and we're playing. This is probably like 85-ish, I'm guessing, because I was in the Hellcats that year. And this girl comes up to me at the party after we played at some party in Hollywood. She goes, you look just like so-and-so from some new wave band or whatever, you know. Hair, yeah, it was one of those type of bands. Uh -huh. and, and I'm like, well, I'm, she's like, shh, shh, tell me you're so-and-so, whatever the guy's name was. I go, I'm, you know, Max, whatever his name was, or whatever at the time. She goes, oh, my God. I go back to her place and f*** her, right? Or I take her back to my place, I f*** her. And then she tells me she's a virgin. And I'm like, oh, my God, you know, where's this going, you know? Really? But then I never saw her again. Never called me again, nothing. But that, to me, symbolized the 80s. Yeah. It was common. I mean, all the time, you, you know how it was back then. A girl, like these young girls would come over and they would just be like, take off their clothes and say, F you. Yeah, it was great. And there were a lot of people like this. Yeah, the girls were horny. They really wanted to have fun. Yeah. Yeah. It was a different era. You know, Debbie Diamond is from the Valley and she used to go over to my friend's house and everything. They told me later, but when she was young and they would all F her and they said she was such a nymphomaniac. No way. Debbie Diamond? Debbie it, Diamond. I'm not going to say the name of the guy who it was. I'll tell you off the air later because you, you'll know who he is. But she used to go f*** all these guys. Uh, in the adult business? Or just no, no. Before, celebrities? I'm talking when she was 16. Uh -huh. 16. She, I heard that she did some movies when she was 16. I don't know about that. But she would go over to these guys. and, and part, I mean, She was friends with them. They were all bike riders back in those days, BMXers. Oh, yeah. Wow. And so she'd show up and just want to f*** all of them. She was a really cool chick. Oh, yeah. They'd say that she'd take off her clothes and dance for him and everything. This is before porn. Uh-huh. You know, so I'm, Debbie is probably the late 80s, right? Whenever yeah. she started. No, I mean, I think she started in the early 80s, kind of low pro. I, You know, that's what yeah. I thought I heard, something, something. I can't, you know, be sure. Yeah, these but are all 80s allegedly. stories I'm telling you about her. Allegedly, so. right? So, you know, in the early 80s, she was, did some kind of movie, something. But, you know, I knew her in, the, in 89. Yeah, but when she was crazy. Right. Let me tell you about Debbie Diamond, what I think. That it was very hard to control her sexually. Like, you would have to be so strong, you know, to be able to compete with her. Because she was, yeah, she's six foot tall, pretty much, or 5'11". Yeah. And she's big bone structure, pretty and sweet and so wild. You know, I'm guessing she was probably partying when we were doing our scenes a lot of times. You know, she's a party animal. Oh, yeah. But you really have to be strong. I could control her, but I watched her beat up guys like it was a joke. Like, she's so too strong. You know, not physically, but, you know, just sexually, she's too strong. She was a, a, a wildcat. Do you want to know why I started shooting camera? Why? Okay. Yeah, of course. I was on a set. Now, 
you by, you remember me as a producer for Buck. That's how we met. So mm-hmm. you always thought of me as a producer. Anyway, so I'm producing at the time for the old um, Spice Network. If you remember, Dave Cravis had Coastline, and he'd have a shoot, us, shoot the movies for Spice, and they'd sell them to Video Team or wherever they went. Right. So anyway, I have Debbie Diamond in my movie. I had J.D. as the cameraman. He's great. You remember J.D.? Yeah. So we're shooting the movie, and Debbie gets there for the scene, and he comes over to me. He says, Jim, I'm going to be leaving. I'm like, what? He goes, "Uh, I don't want to shoot Debbie in the scene. Don't worry, I have another cameraman for you. And I'm like... J.D. said that? J.D. said this to me. I'm like, what? And he goes, yeah, I just don't like to shoot her. She's too hard to shoot because she was so wild. I don't want to go through shooting a sex scene with her. So I, I have another cameraman showing up to shoot the scene. And now these are the big beta cams. I didn't know how to shoot them. And I'm like, what the fuck, right? Yeah. So anyway, Jim Travis, if you remember him, comes over yeah. to shoot it. So he comes over. Yeah, kind of taller, lanky yeah, guy. He was an yeah. editor at a Vogels, remember? Oh, you know what? Just a quick note on that. I think that he ended up being a, um, a plot seller over that Eternal Valley, and he tried to rip me off. And I caught him. I thought he was doing loans. This was in 2006. But anyway, let's go back. Anyway, so... Uh, Small worlds. So, so, well, obviously you would know him because you knew Vogel and yeah. everybody. He, so, he, he uh, owed my friend Jay some money. You know, Teddy, Jay, right, okay. Gardena. Anyway, go ahead. But anyway, so the, what happened is here I am on a, on a feature making, you know, every movie was going to dictate your future, the old Buck Adams thing, you know. And I'm left. I have the best cameraman who deserts me in the middle of my movie. I have the other guy take over. So I said, I'm never going to let this happen again. So what happened is I had to shoot Rocco like right about that week. And I just told the company, yeah, I shoot beta cam. And I had... I made sure I had good, really good video tech. You'd have the video techs in those days to show me everything, and I just shot the camera the very first time beta cam because I was no longer going to be controlled by the cameraman. That's why I started shooting camera. I can thank Debbie Diamond. Wow, that's crazy. So yeah. that was, I remember, was that the one with the helicopter? With Buck rented a helicopter? Well, he always rents helicopters, but it was with Rocco. I remember the one movie... He did with Rocco. Well, I did Rocco the gangbang he did and everything. Oh, okay. Where I had him do all those girls and everything for Sin City. He had him uh-huh. fuck 10 girls. I forget the name of it. Rocco Unleashed or whatever. And they made me shoot two Rocco movies in one day. And this is back in the days we'd start at 8 in the morning and end at 8 in the morning. So, wow. and that's how I started shooting Beta wow. Cam because I didn't want to be left alone ever again. That was crazy. So I started shooting. And that's JD. I never thought he would ever do something. But she was totally hard to control. Yeah. She goes all the while. You have to He didn't want to deal with it. Wow, that's crazy. Yeah, that's that's interesting. That brings me to, you know, some other points. Actually, that's one of my questions you just answered. Yeah. (laughs) How did you guys start? Yeah, because actually the very first camera one, if you want to know the story on, on that, before that, now I'm talking beta cam. And this is kind of when I first got shoot, got going in porn, but I'd made this one movie. And, you know, I met Buck way back when, and I don't want to get sidetracked, way back in 1990 in Florida is how I met Buck. We came out, produced a movie in together. In Florida? Yeah. What the hell did you do in Florida? Uh, yeah, I'll tell you the whole story. Okay. How, I have a very weird story of how I got into porn. So anyway, I make this other porn movie with some guys in these rock bands. And what am I going to do with it? I was partners with... Uh, Cravis from Coastline at the time on a one movie I did with Buck. And he says, Jim, I'll sell it for you, this movie to Kevin Beecham. Midnight. Right. So I sell my movie to Kevin Beecham. I go in there to sell him the movie. He buys it from me, right? Uh-huh. Some run of the mill feature, whatever. I lost money on it. But I give him Shit, the movie. How much you lose? Just a couple thousand. You know, pay you know, he gave me five thousand. We spent like seven or eight thousand to make it. Whatever. Once again I lose money. So he goes, Look it. Do you want to shoot amateur for me? I said, well, I've never picked up a camera in my life. Now, keep in mind, we're going back to 92 now. I had never picked up, and I've never picked up one of these in my life, any camera. And I, and I said, I've never shot a camera. He goes, it's amateur. It's easy. You just get any camera. I go, well, where do I find the people to f-? He goes, Jim, they're amateurs. You just go on the street and ask them. <laughs> Come on, it's not that easy. Well, this is why I end up going, if you heard when I got arrested, when I got to jail and everything. <laughs> so, oh, wow. so what happened was, I go, I'm like, well, okay, I need to get a camera. So I go rent a camera, but how am I going to get the girls? And this is how I met David Lords. David Lords was a salesman over for Zane. So I get David Lords. He goes, Don, Jim, don't worry. I know all these people are 
they're amateurs. We can do it. The reason I got the gig is because if you remember Anabolic, Biff Malibu used to shoot the Beach Bum Amateurs for Midnight. Uh-huh. He quit because he started his own company. He just made the bang, uh, the Gang Bang Girl. Right. Remember, this is what blew up. Uh-huh. He basically says, tells Kevin, I'm not shooting for you anymore. I happened to literally walk in there that day and sell him the movie. Kevin says, you can shoot him for me. So I saw that they were beach bomb movies. I go, well, we should go to the beach and film these. We went down to the public beach. And I was filming the <laughs> on the beach. Whoa. Then the beach started filling up a little bit. What beach was this? Uh, Malibu. Oh, yeah. close to Zuma. But. Oh, yeah. Sla- I was up by uh, El Matador, if you know that area, some of those beaches up in there. I'm just having people <laughs> on the beach. I didn't even care about people showing up. I didn't, you know, what are they going to do, right? Keep in mind, this is 1992, so we're just past the, what, 89, what was it, Freeman case or whatever? yeah. So I had no clue. I bring these moves back in. I show the pictures back in the days when you delivered the chromes. I show mm-hmm. them to Kevin. I go, here's your movie. He's like, holy fuck. Go shoot me more. I said, no, nah, no, nah, I'm done with porn. I've lost money again on this one. He goes, what do you mean? Because I'm giving you 1800 bucks for these six amateur scenes. I go, yeah, but I spent 2000 bucks. He goes, really? He peels off and they're like 500 bucks there. Now you've made $300. Go shoot me more. Okay. So I go back down. We get some more people. We See, go, hold on. You did all that work? For $300. Three, yeah. Wow. I was kind of doing porn for the fuck of it. Uh-huh. I'm like, and I never, all the porn I did was kind of accidental. I never meant to do it. And so what happened is I Destiny. Go, yeah, I went back to shoot the porn again. We got some more people. And I'm trying to finish the scene. And, and, and David's yelling, the cops are coming. You got to get out of here. I go, I got to finish the scene. On the beach. On the beach. Another one on the beach. Like a long story short, David escapes by swimming around swimming into the ocean and Farrell from homegrown was there on the set too. He was going to be one of the talent. Tim Farrell, right? Yeah. They escaped. I get arrested. All of the talent, all the girls had warrants for their arrest. So all of us are arrested and we get taken to the jail and they throw, they hit me with felony counts. They give me pandering and conspiracy back in those days. Conspiracy. The to... Remember we commit a crime together. That's conspiracy. Huh. You know, they hit you on the old gangster things uh-huh. is what it is to hold you in there. So anyway, now we all get locked up. You're shitting bricks. Yeah, I knew I'd get... I went through a period where I got arrested like four or five times in a short period of time. So it was like my fourth time in jail. So I wasn't that freaked out by it. And... Well, you're a wild punk rocker, so you don't really give a fuck, right? No, it's not that. It's just, you know, <laughs> one, I was in Malibu jail, which is, you know, if they take you out to a, a Gura right off the freeway there, if you know where the jail is, yeah. up at Las Virginias is where it is. So they take you up there. So... Um, Make a long story short, they actually had to go back to court two times on it. They were actually pressing this case. And what happened is the judge finally says, look, it's not against the law. He just, you have to, you're busting him for, you know, filming without a permit and nudity in public. So I got time served or whatever, because I was in there for a few days and I got a fine, but that was about, and obviously lawyer fees. But other than that, I, that was it. Wow. And that's when I found out about the law. You shouldn't be shooting on the public beach. Don't ever shoot in Malibu, by the way, people. If anybody's listening, they're out to get you in Malibu. We shot Babe Watch. Did you, were you, you weren't part of that one with Buck? Yeah, I was a producer. Yeah, that's what I thought, right? Babe Watch and, yeah, on the beach. Yeah, but if you remember, we used to pull the permits in one spot and have all the dialogue going, and the cameraman like me would sneak off somewhere else because what we do is we pull the cops in over here where we shot this, and somebody would run over here and shoot the sex with so-and-so over here. Yeah. Because we permitted it, you get everybody watching the dialogue, the girls working out on the beach, and then you sneak off and shoot the sex because you do have the permit, so you got somebody watching just in case they see you over there. Mm-hmm. But you just got to really hide it. Yeah. Huh. Yeah, I was his producer. Yeah. Buck was a cool guy. We'll go, we're going to okay. go into Buck later. But sure. That's wild, huh? That's crazy. So that's how you got started. That's a great story. Yeah. I mean... Kevin, <laughs> old style, right? Just do it. Yeah. Right? That's what Jack Dempsey said. Just do it. Yeah, Kevin's right. like, just do it. They're amateurs. Just ask people to oh, wow. That's cool. And, and so then, so, all right, let's, let's back up. So you were a punk rocker, right? Right. You said, well, what jobs did you have before the adult business? Okay. And this is what the story people used to always think about me. They, I was a stockbroker. This is how I met Buck. I started out in Santa Barbara. You know, this I graduated college. Oh, well, yeah, what college? Uh, Cal State Northridge. 
Oh, well. Yeah, so it took me six years to get through college, but I did get my bachelor's finally. Okay. So afterwards, this is 1987, I graduated. I went into sales. I ended up, you know, I was traveling around being a salesman. My buddy's selling me penny stocks. He goes, Jim, you needed to do this. We're making all this money selling penny stocks. So I get a job there. Long story short, that... that for, is that like kind of like the Wolf of Wall Street yeah, idea? Yeah, that's exactly. I shot for... If you ever see the movie, there's a scene where they're working for Investor Center, that little tiny place. The company I worked for bought all the Investor Center offices wow. and turned it into Power Securities. This is why I'm Jim Powers. So I was selling right. penny stocks. That's what I want to know, too. How do you got your name? But all right. We get shut down. I'm in New York when we get shut down. They come in there and they shut us all down. You're in, New in where? Now I was in New York. You're in New York? Yeah, I was. Okay, oh. there's this... Um, albino looking really really white skinned chick i'd met in denver so i wanted to go to new york and fuck her so i just flew up for the weekend i said you should like this all the time so is she good albino kind of well exotic? she's just so white yeah right. yeah she, she lives in buffalo yeah. and their office their headquarters was in rochester so i went up there partying and everything but we got shut down when i was in up there so anyway i come back to la i got nowhere to go so i moved to another penny stock stock job in atlanta that firm also gets wiped out Keep in mind, everything was going under back in that era. So this, this is, is what, 80 what? 1990 by now. 1990, okay. Yeah, so I was, I was uh, doing the socks 88, all the way up to until almost 95. So, because I was just a part-time pornographer for a few years. And so, fast forward, forward, 1990, I'm in Atlanta. We go under. My buddy is down in Florida. He hooks up with a guy to start making kickboxing videos. He goes, Jim. We need to put out kickboxing videos. And I go, well, how do we do that? He goes, listen, you need to talk to some of your clients, get money. He goes, I've got the rights where we can film the kickboxing championship that's taking place somewhere down in Palm Beach, wherever the fuck it was, right? It's, and we're going to put this out on video because we know a guy, my producer used to produce Foxy Boxing. Remember at the Tropicana back in the 80s? Before my time, kind of. Okay, well, it's late 80s, there was uh -huh. a thing called Foxy Boxing. If you remember yeah. Dennis Morgan, little bald guy. Yeah, 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 Dennis Morgan. He, he used, died, right, right? Yeah, he's dead. Yeah, but... He used to put on Foxy Boxing at the Tropicana. No shit. They used to put out these videos of girls in bikinis boxing. So wow. I'm like, okay, that sounds good. So I, you know, quit the job. I get the money together. I come down to his place in West Palm. He goes, Jim, I got bad news for you. I'm like, what? He goes, I found out that the producer I was talking to, he used to do porn. And I'm like, what? He goes, yeah, it's bad news, bad news. Um, obviously affiliated with the mafia. We can't go there. We could be killed. I go, yeah, no, no, I understand. I Obviously, I know about porn. I don't want to go near that. This is before you shot, or why? This is before I shot. This, okay. is 19, this is how I got into porn. Wow. And I'm like, no, no, we do not want to do porn. Whatever we do, that sounds yeah. So what do you say we do? Because so I have a plan. What we're gonna do is we're gonna set up. We're gonna do loans for people that need money to start businesses. But first, we need to drink a lot and go on some cruises. So <laughs> so anyway, we set up an office, just partying down there, and. He had, because he was running a phone room and he'd paid for all this stuff, like 100,000 regular horror movies were showed up in boxes, VHS. This whole truckload, because this guy owed him money, the old porn guy. So he took the whole truck. So Who we had was this semi. porn guy? He had he got in trouble for doing a, a Tracy Lords movie at one time. You might know him. I don't remember his name. Ruby? Anymore. I don't know who he was, but he was down running one stops is what he was doing in Florida. Okay. He was running one stops. So anyhow... You know, but we were, we didn't want to deal with him because that was porn and we didn't want to be involved with the mafia. That's what he said. So, anyway, never mind. We go hijack this 100,000 VHSs. We have boxes of these things. I'm talking Nightmare on Elm Street, all that type of crap. Wow. Night of the Living Dead. It was, they cool. were one stopping these in those days. Uh -huh. Okay. And they were the, they, remember those like tiny spools? They were the really cheap VHS tape. It would only be a little bit to make them. And they yeah, were selling these cheaper, kind of, yeah. you know, like almost like bootlegs. They weren't uh -huh. bootlegs, but they'd be in the Walmarts and everything, the crappier VHSs. Way cheaper, right? You, you know the ones I'm talking about. I think so. That's what we had. So I needed to unload all these things. We had the contacts he'd given us that were going to carry our kickboxing video if we would have made it. So I start cold calling all these places to unload all these movies. I find a guy named Suitcase Barry Calvin. Do you remember him? Uh -huh. 
Suitcase Barry Calvin was operating out of Orlando. They had a company called A&B Video that was the original amateur video on the East Coast. He has a guy living with him that came out there named Buck Adams. Buck Adams <laughs> took a sabbatical from porn circa 1990 after making his last big movie with a helicopter, whatever the hell he did. And he's out there working on the John Holmes story. He's grown his hair out into an afro. He has the mustache, and he's wearing this white suit. Like <laughs> I, I saw the white suit. He okay. had an afro? He had like this curly hair like John Holmes. He permed it. Oh, so he was looking like John He Holmes. was trying to play John Holmes and get investors. He thinks we have money. So he goes, you two need to be into porn. I'm like, I don't know. You know, there's a, it's full of mafia. No, he's not full of mafia. He tells us that's, that's old. Uh, Fine. You guys need to make porn movies because we were worried about legalities. Uh-huh. So he shows up at our place in West Palm Beach. And I'll never forget this. I'm sitting in there. TV's on. Door opens. Buck Adams walks in. I thought it was John Holmes. I knew John Holmes was dead, but I thought it was John Holmes. And, and I, I immediately thought, this is how all you porn actors dressed. Uh-huh. I'm like, shit, it's real. <laughs> They're all really still in the 70s. Because I saw this, I'm like, like whoa. Oh, well, that's crazy. And of course, you know, being stockbrokers, we, we take them out to hit all the strip bars and party and everything. Uh-huh. So the idea becomes, we're going to set up a porn company. So we went and got a lease, and we got all this type of stuff. We got in this, Florida? In Orlando, yeah. Oh. We set up a whole company. And I go back up to Atlanta because I was dealing with investors and we need more and more money now because now we're going to start making movies and, you know, we did all this stuff. You know, we got the loans for all the equipment and this is back in the days when you wow. had to get like 100 VHS machines. It, and and you're a good target so you got... Well, I would deal with the, yeah, the doctors and stuff. Listen, wow. I got a great investment. Give me 10000 Give me $20,000. No and we're putting together this investor packages. Wow. That's so beautiful. I would be the guy in Atlanta because I had a place up there and then we got the place in Florida. So I'm up in Atlanta. I'm starting to hang out with Buck Adams now. In Atlanta? In Atlanta, because or... Atlanta was living, Buck was living with the original Tabitha Stevens. Remember the oh, blonde? Yeah, she was the... in, of course I know Tabitha, because Buck used to be our roommate. Well, he came to my house to stay the night because he was had no place to stay. He stayed for six months. Yeah, Ferrari or whatever her original name was. No, but I, mean, I didn't know who she was until he brought her in one day and said, but... go ahead, take, hit it. Yeah, it's a blonde. <laughs> I'm hanging out. Buck is now living with her in Atlanta, doing the wow. same thing to her. So I'm hanging out with them. Doing what to her? You know, whatever. You know how he jumps on a girlfriend and lives with her? Oh, them? yeah, he liked the girls, yeah. Yeah, you know how he was. He's, he's right. all in love with her. He's going to make her a star. So he's like, Jim, you need to be a producer, which is what you need to do. I go, no, Buck, I don't want to produce porn. I mean, you know, we'll get the money together. We'll do the packages here. we got all this stuff going with Barry. Anyway, Buck and me go back down to Florida. Now, back up. Remember we were doing those loans? My job was to talk to everybody to give the money, get the money for the loans. Like, say, you needed money to open a store, but you have horrible credit. Fine. Send me $500. I'll submit your application for you. We were doing this stuff back then. Would then we, you get them a loan, or were you just taking the money? The idea was, even if we didn't get them the loan, we'd keep most of the money. But we would try to get the loan <laughs> submitted. What my partner was doing is he was not submitting the loans up to the bank we had in North Carolina. He was supposed to be taken off of Florida on the weekends. He told me he was submitting the loans. Bullshit. He was up in Rochester partying and stuff is what he was doing. With the money? Yeah. Wow. And, and so I get back. And now, back in those days, they were cracking down the penny stock crimes and, and the boiler rooms in Florida. They came hard after us because all the people that complained, we had one of those executive suite places. And other thing is... When we moved out of the place, he never even told them we moved out. He just blew them off. He was like this. So they were pissed at us. So immediately, because he's so worried about going to jail, keep in mind, he was the one that was really afraid of the mafia, right? Uh-huh. He pays back everybody immediately. Immediately. So he drains the account, and I come back to this. Oh, by the way, you know, you're know, you wanted by the police, but I paid off everybody. I go, well, what about all this stuff we have? We're on a lease here. We have this huge... Like 40,000 square foot place. We had a Fuck. big place. 40,000. Like, it was huge. I go, what about all the shit you lease? Keep in mind, things were a lot cheaper. This was Florida. Yeah. And I'm and I, like, what are we going to do with this? And he goes, well, I'm going to get this thing going with Barry and whatever. And, we're, and I'm like, well, fuck it. I'm out of here. Buck and me take off. I go back. I go, Buck says, you need to go back to California. So instead of giving him this other 50K I had, I go, fuck it. Let's go make a porn movie. 
Buck, of course, says, we need to shoot 35 millimeter film. <laughs> of course. Sounds good, Buck. Yeah, I didn't know. <laughs> Buck and me go back to California where we make our first porno, which was January 2nd, 1991, was the first day of production. So we get wow. back in like late November. We're putting it all together. We're going to have an airplane, filming an airplane. We hired JD. Our crew was like Vogel, JD. Uh, Gilman was a grip. You remember? Jay Gilman. Jay Gilman. All right. We had all these guys in the crew. It was uh, Raven was in the movie. She was great. Casey Beautiful. Williams. Casey Williams. Buck was in love with her then? Not yet. Okay. This is what he fell in love with her on this set. All right. Remember, because he was still with Tabitha. Okay. And then we had, uh, oh God, who else was in it? Randy West. Randy West was with Casey. We Williams. had the greatest actor in porn, Wayne Summers. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this is when I realized why Buck had a stunt cock for him and everything. And uh -huh. then he fell in love with Raven, too, on the set, because Buck <laughs> Raven. Anyway, so we shoot this movie. Who fell in love with Raven? Buck. Buck fell in love with Buck fell in love with Raven and Casey. Really, because Raven was already in the business, but she came back and that was his chance to work with her or yeah, something? we talked her into doing a big comeback. She oh. was our star. She was the taboo girl, American taboo yeah. of the eighties, right? Yeah, she was huge. So we and we made this movie called Speed Trap, shot on thirty-five millimeter film. And then what happens is, right when we shoot the movie, I had no clue what I'm doing. Buck just leaves me. I'm like, he's like, he got mad. He started falling in love with one of the other girls. I'm like, Buck, because I, I, I can't just keep on paying for your car because he had this Porsche he wanted to get fixed for his racing Porsche. Right, I saw that. I said, Buck, I've already given you whatever money. That's what we agreed upon. Well, I'm not going to finish the movie unless, you know, you pay for the rest of this car. And I'm like, really? What the fuck? Fuck you. So now I'm stuck having to go to the edit bay. And this is the day they used to cut the film. Oh, my God. And I'm sitting in there. I'd never been around a film before. I was a business major. So now I'm, you know, like, what are we going to do with this movie? We ended up sell selling it to Russ Hampshire. Wow, really? But it still lost money. So I'm like, I'm done with porn. I mean, you put how much into it? We must have spent, like, back in those days, I mean, he threw in our 25, 75,000, 80. What? You spent 75,000, 80? Okay, think of much how much money things oh, cost. We shot over five yeah. days. Crews helped were how big. Uh -huh. And think of post-production. Yeah. Every single, titles, titles cost me to this day, I remember it. Do you know what the titles that came across the screen cost me? Now they're free, right? Titles are free. How much? $1,000. Wow. Uh -uh. You had to have them separately made. That sucks. You had to have the audio linked and everything to the film. You had to do all these type of masters. Remember how expensive film was? Yeah. We, we had to develop it. Yeah. Every canister cost you money. I was shooting 35 millimeter. Wow. And so how much did you lose? Uh, it was a learning experience. We got back some foreign deals. You know how I'm sure I got screwed by Kravis. I got back. I put in like on my end 50K. I got back maybe 30 so I only lost 20K. But, you know, I didn't have a, a job or anything. I'm back living with my parents and everything. Oh, my God. You took a bloodbath in his business. Yeah, so th th that was my first movie. I'm like, fuck it. I quit. I'm not going to do any more porn. And then when all that happened is, the, like, the following year, I'm with my buddy's band, No Effects. They're playing Las Vegas. And I go. It happened to go into Bally's. Coincidence. Happened to be the night of the porn awards. Everybody's hanging at the bar. Wow. We were just a bunch of punk rockers. Out. 91? 91. Well, I was there. Yeah, so you would have been there. Yeah. I go walking into the bar. I'm like, holy shit. I see people. They all recognize me from the, the movie we did because it's the following year. Hey, Jim. I see a, you know Wayne. I see Casey, whoever. You know, all these people I met. And I'm with a, this one band member. He goes, I go, yeah, I made this movie because they didn't really like it. They saw the movie. They're like, eh, it's not raunchy enough. Uh -huh. I go, yeah. I go, I could make a better movie for $5,000. Really? Who said that? I said that. I said oh. I could make a better movie than that horrible piece of shit speed trap I made for 5000 bucks. That movie sucked. There's barely any hardcore in it. It was just, you know. Uh, artsy. Yeah, it was artsy. a fuck movie. And I'm like, you know, I could make a better movie. Are we, I really? I'll put up half. Oh, fuck, I really don't want to make porno again. And my buddy's like in a band. He goes, no, no, I'll direct it. Whatever. Fine. Okay. I'll put up half. You put up half. We're twenty five hundred bucks each. That's all it's going to be. I'll get my buddy to fly out here and film it for free. Because I had a buddy who was a cameraman back in video the, camera, yeah, of course, just video. Yeah. We're going to make a video three quarter inch. All right, three quarter. We'll get the locations for free from our friends. We got all this stuff for free. All we got to do is hire the actors. That's it. In fact, our friends leaving me the non sex roles in the movie. So we make this other movie, and. Um, 
you know, it's like uh, the very first day of set, my friend who was supposed to direct it's on acid. He's laying on the ground staring at a cigarette in the sky. I'm like, what are you doing? And he's just staring at a cigarette. So I had to take over directing the porn. So this, here we are a year later. Oh. I'm in the same predicament, right? Because this would have been February of 92. Wow. So this is, so what happened is I made another movie, whatever. We spent, ended up spending like six, a couple of, thousand more editing and all this crap because my friend who edit never he never actually edited it for free he didn't do that so i had to bring it to somebody to edit it you know i paid like two thousand bucks back in those days you remember what they charged yeah, yeah for the a big feature. day is expensive yeah Time. it was like two thousand bucks to edit this goddamn movie but i had to do that because I, I went to cravis with it look i made this movie what do i do he goes well you need to get it used to be the avid editing system and that's who charged me the money that's right cravis at his avid editing system yeah. And, but he did sell it to me for Beecham, 5000 bucks, And now we're getting back to how I fen- ended up in Beach Bum Amateurs. So you lost two or $3,000? I that. lost again. Fuck. I'm still, I'm now with my, you know, I'm married by this point. Oh, yeah, we're going to go to that, but that's interesting. But yeah. Yeah, so. But I, the Gale Force. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so, so anyway, before that, go ahead, keep going. So anyhow, I, uh, you know, I what happened is my legal fees, my dad wasn't going to pay for them, so I had to figure some way to pay my legal fees, so I had to keep on shooting more porn. So Kevin Beecham says, yeah, just keep on shooting it for me. I figured a way where I was getting it for free for a while. The guy's house, who I was shooting at, Dale Davis, who's dead now, who's old surfing director, was a pervert. Dale says, he goes, Jim, if you bring the girls over to me, I'll pay them as long as you film me getting a blowjob from them and you put them together in a lesbian stuff because I'll cut it for you. You have the location. I'll pay them. I'll give you the movie. Everything as long as you film me blowing and them blowing me. Can't beat that. Ninety two. Ninety two. So I'm basically his. You know, oh, ninety two into ninety three. I'm like, no problem. I already had the connections now with the agents. Oh, wow. You know, yeah. they didn't care. I'm hiring two girls. All you gotta do is blow this old guy. And then you girls get it on. That's Nobody cool. said no to it. You know, and he had a test, you know, back in the Eliza days, he'd go down right, there. With it, well, the truth is, the test just started in 92. Yeah. They weren't around. Yeah, there really wasn't big testing. As I remember, it wasn't a place in Culver City people used to go yeah, to. Yeah, over there on Venice Boulevard. Yeah, it's on Venice Boulevard. Mm-hmm. And so, I'm like, this is great. So I was shooting all these lesbian movies, what I was doing. And I'd get a couple here and there. Now I was learning, starting to get find free couples and amateur couples. Wow. Because I'd go to swing parties. Gail Force and me would go out, and we'd hit swing parties and find people to be in these movies. So I was getting deals. For free? Yeah. We got a few of these. Or give them 100 bucks Uh or whatever. And then we'd always have done beer and stuff on the set, so people were comfortable. It was like a party. Uh Or Uh then I was always over at Dale's getting the free scenes. and, Uh And even the ones I'd go shoot, Heidi me would start shooting him at the house. Gail. Gail uh-huh. me would shoot him at my house. I'd first bring him the footage. He cut it for me. Wow. And sell it to Kevin. And I would sell, and Kevin was getting, you know, yeah, he loved it because he's getting all these new people. Yeah. And that was the, the Beach Bum Amateurs. And I was. Wow, that's a wild story. Yeah. And then when ha- I was still working as a stockbroker because I got another job. And then sometime in 94, I started getting really busy doing the porn because what happened is all of a sudden I, I started getting a reputation now. Yeah, because yeah, I could, I was undercutting people's prices. That's how I would get into the companies. Yeah, I mean, you're a businessman. Right. So I basically undercut their prices because uh-huh. I had no cost in these things. And it was not like I did a whole lot, maybe 12 or 14, but it's enough to get you rolling. I would pay my legal fees and everything with my attorney. But legal fees for what? A felony. I mean, I, I had... Oh, for the beach? Yeah, yeah the beach. Right, That's okay. the reason I started doing this uh-huh. was to pay the my, my lawyer at the time. A, a felony, you had to put down 7000 at the time. Oh, shit, yeah. And it was a little bit more than that. And, you know, I immediately had to pay my dad back the bail. But he got that back anyway. You know, it was, it was like 10000 bail. And it was a pain in the ass. So now I'm doing all this stuff for free. And then all of a sudden, I'm starting to get more and more work. And then all of a sudden, I started the whole thing with Kravis. All of a sudden, Spice comes about, and I become the Spice director. Really? And I ended up getting fired from my job because I really wasn't doing much production because I was doing so much porno on the weekends at night. Of your job was stockbroker? Stockbroker. Okay. So I ended up getting fired. From Now I'm at a nice place. So I get up fired. So by 95, I'm like, shit, I have this house in Woodland Hills. How am I going to pay my bills? I went full on into porn. Wow. That's a, I mean, to me, it seems like porn was your destiny. Well, I, look, I came in 
I'm one of the earlier guys in the Gonzo era. Mm-hmm. And what I was doing, like the perverted stories, we were starting to do, when I came into porn, and people might remember this, I know you do. When I came in in 1991-ish, 92, you had, gon- you had, there was no Gonzo. You had amateur, you had feature. Mm-hmm. That was it. Mm-hmm. That was it. Am- yeah, let me tell you something about amateur. I would do the hard features all day, which are, you know, more stress right. and more people, more cameras. But then once in a while, they call me to do an amateur. And I say, I'll be right there. They pay me 125 bucks, whatever. Right. It was just some new girl. And I'd be like, Whoosh. those were fun. Yeah. Anyways, go ahead. That's exactly. Because I get a guy like you. A lot of times you guys would love to come do this. Yeah. Give you a hundred bucks. Come this little girl. You didn't have to put up with the bullshit being on the set. So right. I started getting guys all the time. I was shooting Ron Jeremy all the time. I'd put him in a mask. So I started... I have all these amateur Ron things. Ron the mask. And what what really took off for me though is I'd started shooting amateurs for JM, JM Productions. Mm-hmm. And I was shooting all these amateurs with little stories to them. And I, I was I was starting to get more complicated on the amateurs I was doing. I was selling the stuff to Bobby Hollander, selling him amateur Bobby stuff. Bobby Hollander, yeah. He remember? passed he away a long time ago. Long time ago. He was a cool guy. I did a few movies for him. He was cool. Yeah, really nice guy. Yeah. Old school New York. Big kinda. time. Big Mafia, time. yeah. Always had cash. Yeah. He was cool. <laughs> he, but I was shooting all these amateurs, and what happened is we went into this era where I started doing my own things. Like, I was starting to make a little money, so I put money into more productions. The Double Penetration Virgins. I started getting big-name porn stars to do their first DP. Anabolic had already started taking off. They were doing just videos of gangbangs. So I pretty soon started shooting just gangbang videos for JM. We started doing things like perverted stories, these really crazy things. So you're kind of copying anabolic a little bit, or the not gang really? bangs? Yeah, I, well, I never watched one of them, but the concept. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah. I mean, which yeah. people were doing them before, right? You know, Biff Malibu. But you know, the reason why Biff Malibu did them, you know why? Why? Because that's the only scenes he really was hired to do, so he was familiar with it. Oh, okay. Well, I started doing all this really weird stuff. Mm-hmm. You know, like they would be. The perverted stories we started doing. I mean, this is what eventually came about Bakaki and all that stuff. And that's when I was really starting to take off about that late 90s. Who made that name, by the way? I never even know how the fuck. Okay. Did you make it? No. Here's the whole story of how Bakaki. That's why I'm in the Hall of Fame and everything. Here's how <laughs> Bakaki right. came about. Jeff Mike, if, with JM, really was. I mean, he was a trend star. He really was. I go in his office when he goes, Jim, look at this. This was how it always start like this. He would see something. Jim. You need to see this. Sit down. He'd click on something he found. I'm like, I watched this video. It's this Japanese girl, and she's in a room alone. She's it really looks nice. She's wearing this little Playboy, you know, ears, and she's sitting there all alone. And all these men come walking in the room. It's like, it looked like a hundred of them. They all come in the room. A they're Japanese all, video. Yeah, they're all being dead quiet, and then you hear this clap. In unison, they all stand up. You hear another clap. They all take off their underwear. And then there's little pixelations on all their dicks. They wouldn't show pubic hair. Yeah. And on the th- third clap, they throw their underwear and yell bukkake. And we're like, what? And I'm like, what the fuck? What the fuck? And, I, and I'm like, and then they just start jerking off in her face. That's the whole video. And they're not showing it because it's all pixelated because it's Japanese. Wow. And I'm watching this. And I'm like, how the hell am I supposed to get all these guys? He goes, look it. We need to try this. I don't care how, but get like 20 guys, whatever you can get, and put it into a perverted stories. I'm like, okay. I just get, you know, some guys, you know, regular, Dave Harmon, Rick Masters, you know, like guys. Can you come jerk off in, in this one scene? Yeah, sure. You know, whatever. It, it, <laughs> it looks just like Dave Harmon right yeah. there. <laughs> so I get like, I don't know. The very first one maybe had 15, 16 guys. I don't know. I copied it exactly like they did it in Japan. So, hold on. So, just from a Japanese video, this is this name came about because I never heard it until these guys, you guys put it together, right? I know. So, you named it Bukaki? Bu- no, we named it American Bukaki. Wow. Oh, because it was Japanese Bukaki. It was Japanese. It was in a perverted stories. People don't know a lot of this stuff. We would test things out on perverted stories. It was like. Something we just test series from gag factors, yeah. gutter mouths, all this stuff kind of came out of perverted stories. So, so anyway, what, what year is this? Late nineties, turn of the century. This is going into the turn of the century. This one, my heyday was that late nineties because 
I was John T. Bone's big competition. Don't you remember? We were I love John Bone. He was cool. We were constantly competing on double anals. I did the triple a, uh, triple penetration debutante sluts. I was doing the world record gang bangs. He would do so and so. I'd do so and so. Yeah, it was St. Clair he did, right? And Annabelle Chong, right. right? And then I would do spontaneous. I did the spontaneous ecstasy. I did the candy oh. apples one. We were oh. just, you know, it was, wow, okay. that's how it was. And these ridiculous big budgets. I mean, I was shooting films now. I mean, this is like, I was getting $100,000 budgets on some of these movies. People don't realize. From J- Jeff Mike? Not from Jeff Mike, from Heatwave. Because now I was starting to do films and everything. Heatwave was giving you a $100,000 budget? We shot movies. I love, he's a cool dude. Don't you was, remember was, Buck came in to do it, wow. and I had to take it over and turn it into two movies and fix it. Filth and Sleaze. I don't know, yeah. We spent $120,000 on that. Huh. S- 16 millimeter. Wow. What's it called? Filth and Sleaze. I never heard of it. Wow. But they were they were selling in Europe. Oh, okay. So this stuff was doing great. You guys didn't hire me. No, <laughs> I just kidding. Was, I wouldn't be there. Well, you were kind of like a VCA guy. I looked at you. You were like oh, in yeah. Bucks movies, and you were one. I don't know. I wasn't. I was never good enough for the VCA. We were in our own world. Yeah, yeah. No. You know how it was back then. Yeah. There were the VCA guys who were very hoity-toity and stuck up, and you guys all were friends with the guy who dressed in white. Was, so I was a stuck up guy, but I was. But you know what I mean. There yeah, was an yeah, image. Sure. They, they kept right. that image. They tried to keep. I it. I never really thought of it, but I got a lot of great, you yeah. know, positions. So I was in this weird underworld stuff that we were doing, <laughs> and um, but it was good because it was very popular. This Gonzo market had taken off. Yeah. It was no longer just amateurs and features. I was in this weird in between uh-huh. era area, and I was still shooting tons of features at the time because I could do both. Wow. So Bakaki the. Then he goes, listen, we need to do Pukaki on its own. You need to start getting more guys. So what I did is I shot another one. We got like 20 guys over. I said, how am I going to get more guys? I had a PA who worked and did the spontaneous ecstasy thing. Yeah, hold on real quick. Spontaneous ecstasy. I worked with her, right? Yeah. In a scene for video exclusives, I think, right? Yeah, probably. Right away, probably back, they were still shooting probably like 94, five, yeah. whatever. And... When I think about it, she could not deal with me. She could not take my aggression or she anything. She couldn't deal with so anything. So how the fuck could she do that? It was horrible. That's so how I was thinking. But remember, all they had to do is spread their legs and poke a penis in once or twice, and it counted as a number. Oh, my God. We did yeah. the Spawn 551. Call what? 551 guys. Really? I actually had wow. 150 guys show up, but I just throw a mask on you and send you through the line. Like Dave Harmon was, was probably 20 of those numbers. <laughs> he just kept on going through in different right. masks, mustache, whatever. Oh, yeah, that's funny, man. Anyway. That's great. I mean, that's a great story. Yeah, so we, what we need to do is how are we going to get all these guys? Okay, I want to go back to that real quick. Okay. You did 150 guys. 150. But I you named it 551 because you used the same guy 20 times. What do you think Bone was T Bone was doing? Same shit. I had a, I had the most guys of anybody in a gangbang. Yeah, how, the thing is, I'm a producer, director, all that. You know what I mean? Company owner. How the hell do you get that many guys? It's almost impossible. I was a master at it. I did because the Bukakis. Here's how I figured out how to do it. The Spawn 551. We worked our ass off. Now here's. Things are different now. Spawn 551? Is that like the movie Spawn? Yeah. <laughs> we call it the Spawn 551. Wow. Okay. Back in those days, it was Eliza testing. It was $35. Right. The testing center was in North Hollywood. Uh-huh. What I did on that one is I said, I will pay for your test. That way it's for free. Because remember, we used to try to get the guys for free. But I go, I'll pay for the test. So I used to have a tab over at that clinic that was in North Hollywood. So you could come off the street, you're dead broke or whatever, or, and this on the Bukakis, this is what we started doing is you would go over there because I learned it all on the spawn how to do it because most of those guys were there for free, but I hired probably 40 ringers. Dave Hardman's the world. I ha- I brought in tons of those guys because I needed the numbers and guys that could fuck. Also, guys would see them do it. And they figured they could do it. And it helped. And we had the fluffers and everything. I want to go back to fluffers, yeah. but yeah, keep yeah. moving. So we'd have the fluffers up there and you would go get tested. Your results would be in in 10 minutes, and you could drive right over to the shoot. Boom, you're in line to fuck. Yeah. It was that easy. So here we are. How am I going to pull off the Bukakis? The guy that spawned was a fan of him, worked at Universal Studios. He ran the Jurassic Park ride. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Back to this, what? He worked at Universal Studios. Uh He ran the Jurassic Park ride. He was the lead. His team of people would put you on the ride at Jurassic Park. So you'd get in there, 
You know how it was. They would put you in your thing. One guy would make the thing run. You know, they, they worked the ride. Yeah. He knew how to work it like a ride. I go, how are we going to get all these guys and how am I going to run Pukakis? Because they started getting bigger. What I started doing is like, you need to help me do the Pukakis. We set up a Pukaki hotline. And a Bukaki hotline. Yeah. I mean, you say would, it again. The Bukaki hotline. And <laughs> that it, crazy. it would be my voice. You've reached the Bukaki hotline. So you want to be a porn star? You know, be like, work with gorgeous women? Well, it's time to show the world you have what it, what it takes. This Wednesday night, 7 o'clock, it's going down. And wow. so I would do this whole announcement. This is back... How we advertise this before the internet. That's a great voice, man. It was before the internet. We used to go... Uh, do ads in LA Weekly, LA Reader, and everything. We take out these ads. Okay, everybody read it back in those days. Yeah. Also, I, I read it. I knew guys that needed money. We would do like a flyer, and we'd go to all the uh, the uh, the places that we wash clothes at and stuff. Because I figured bachelors wash their clothes. We'd put them up wow. in those places. That's great. And so, and we'd run this ad, and he would take all the calls. So now we're starting to get the real Bukaki guys in. So by the second. A third Bukaki, we're starting to get now 40, 50, 60 people in there, okay? And what I was doing is we had to keep on moving into bigger places. We got up to, I think the most we had was like 125 guys show up at a Bukaki. Wow. And that was the one where we had, oh my gosh, this is Terry Weagle, I think was her name. Oh, Terry Weagle. Um, let me tell you about Terry Weagle. She slipped by me. She was probably one of the prettiest or the prettiest playmates of the year of Playboy ever. And she slipped by me in her prime, you know, because right. he was working for Patty Rhodes on contract. And I was supposed to work there, but it just kept slipping by. And I was so fucking pissed off. That's one of the prettiest girls that I never got a hold of. That's never. my but No. And that really makes me crazy. Because she was around in her prime, 892 or whatever it was, right? She was so pretty. But go ahead. Well, what happens... Here's what made Bukaki blow up. One of the early ones, I got Terry Weagle to do the thing where she held the girl's head to catch all the cum. What? Terry we she held the girl's head to catch the cum. Wow. So everybody wanted to come see Terry Weagle. She is so beautiful. The Howard Stern show comes to the set. Howard but Stern show. Not Howard Stern himself, but he used to send out a guy named Green something downtown Melrose, somebody Melrose, uh -huh. downtown Larry Melrose, Green, whatever. He was an on the street reporter who did a broadcast from it, who came down and covered the Bukaki set. It gets on oh. Howard Stern. The name Bukaki goes out there. So now we're running the ads. Oh my God, that's money. I needed, back in those days, we'd have 20 people work on that crew because we had to run it like a ride. The hardest thing was I set it up, you could go get tested, I'd pay for your test, 35 bucks. We used to pay you. $50 to, and we, we do it like this. Three weeks in a row, we do Bukakis. Boom, boom, boom. Every Wednesday, seven o'clock. I had to do it when people got off work and I had to be near a bus line. Every Wednesday? So you shoot four a month? No, no. We would do it every couple months and do three Wednesdays in a oh, row. Oh, okay, I guess. I had to do it like clockwork. It had to be like a bus schedule. So I knew I had to do it near a bus station because most of these guys didn't have cars. They needed to make it easy. Had to have the clinic. So they go in the clinic. I pay for your test because here's how it works. If you don't have the money to pay for your test, I'll pay for it, but you're working for free the first time instead of making 50 bucks. I'm doing three of them in a row. So now you already have a test, so now you're pocketing an next, next, it's free cash for you. And well, not only that. Big money. <laughs> no, hold on. No, my friend. I was opening the door to porn for you because once they saw what a stud you were, you don't think there's going to be more work for a man oh, like you? yeah. Fuck yeah. You got to be against T.T. Boy, motherfucker. Right. <laughs> Why can't you be the next T.T. Boy? You just need the right opportunity, and people uh -huh. are holding you back. We're not. We are equal opportunity. So we would get all these guys That's coming. Great. You tell them this line. Basically, the, I would say. Oh, of course. Yeah. Uh, you know, I would announce it. Beautiful. And, uh, and it, it actually became reality, because what happened is I started having, I used to call them the I used to call Brandon Irons a chicken hawk because they used to start mooching all the guys from my bukkakis because we were spending a lot of money on this advertising. It wasn't cheap. How it, much? Give me an example. Well, each ad I was running in the LA Weekly was costing like two seventy five a week. Mm -hmm. So we would spend $1,000 for the advertising. What do mm -hmm. you think another company spent on their advertising to get the guys? Zero. Thank you. Yeah. So yeah. I, had, I would have all these guys. I'd have a line going out the door around Bobby... Bobby, uh, remember Chandler Studios, Bobby Gallagher? Yep. 
Bobby Gallagher and uh, Chan- yeah, Bo- Bobby Gallagher. Was that Bobby yeah, because Gallagher? by the time Chandler it really Studio, started yeah. taking off, Magnolia Chandler, right? Yeah, yeah. Chandler yeah. Studios, over off of Lancashire or something like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, but Milton, Milton, so, yeah, Milton's Milton, 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 but Milton was gone by then. Oh, okay. Because Milton left by 95. Okay. okay. 96, somewhere around there, Milton was gone. And Bobby took it over. Okay. So anyway, what we were doing is we had we would have it over there, and we needed to bring all the people through. And so I would have to have security guards outside because fights would break out. We'd have these guys straight out of prison. I mean, there was a oh, lot shit, of problems really? we had. Oh, yeah. A lot of fights. I'd have to have big security there. But the paperwork they used to have to go through, filling out the paperwork, wow. Holding them That's in there because I wouldn't let them in the back until while we shot the preview stuff. Until we we would sit them all down and run the second camera while I'm seating. I used to have to give them a speech in front of everybody, wow. and I'd run around because I had to keep them in control, get them in their underwear, and do the whole clap because they, you know, the cocky was cocky. about, you know, control and discipline. Wow. And I have That's to give them the whole speech. So, could any of these guys off the street perform? Tons ended up being doing pornos. They did tons. Yeah, there was we had, wow. and it was so funny as all the guys through the years that just would show up. John Doe used to show up at some of the early ones because he's a freak. John Brandon Doe was, show up? was there. Evan Stone was hanging out with these guys. But I mean, okay, I don't want to talk shit, but John Doe is a real performer. Yeah, that's about as far as I'll go. He was. He showed up. You know what I mean? A, yeah, he's a pervert. Yeah, but he's a real performer. Oh, he was great. But yeah. no, I'm saying I'd have these guys who would just show up because they used to love the whole girl getting covered in cum. It's crazy. He, I didn't know he was that perverted. Oh. I hung out with him. He never told me that. You know, he, I, I never sensed that. Huh? Oh crazy. yeah, because I remember one. Day, I'm like, what the fuck are you doing here? <laughs> <laughs> right. He was getting paid good money. Right. It's like because they would show up afterwards. Right. Wow, that's crazy. Because just, just to, that's crazy. Just to do something perverted. We used to have guys, doctors, fly in from New York just to do it. Wow. Yes. Really? In that is day. wild. So I mean, say they get American Bukaki. Say American Bukaki. That is crazy. And we called it American Bukaki. So they, you know, I'm a distributor, whatever, you know, all those, all of it. They were selling a lot of pieces then, weren't they? Okay, back in those days, you know, he would move out the door, ten thousand at thirteen. Out bucks. the fucking door. Out the door. That's how he bought the Lamborghinis and everything he had. Ten thousand. He was fairly low profile. Kept it, didn't he? No, nah, they were getting kind of big. Yeah. They, were, they were getting popular. Ten thousand pieces out the door. Out the door. Yeah, his cred. Then reorders up the ass. It built the company. Wow. Yeah, it's not crazy. like I made all the money. I was just the, I was the it, schmo shooting it. But it was good. Okay, I was being paid wow. good money to be a director. Uh-huh. And I, it was kind of funny because I never really got any accolades or anything. Yeah. Because that's what he used to laugh at me. Because that's a, that's a lot of work you were oh, yeah. mentally. Yeah. Well, that's what he used to say. He goes, you know, Jim? Because he tells me this years later. He goes, you know what? You're like the Ramones. He goes, you never get past selling out the Palladium. But you do it every year, year after year. I'm steady. That's how I am. I'm just a hard worker. I'm very steady. Do you never hear me? You know, like yeah. I never get. Well, I did win director of the year once. Yeah. I actually won director of the year during the peak of all the stuff that was going on for a rape scene. Oh. I shut this full on at the time. Remember all the shit people were shooting? Yeah, yeah weird shit. Yeah. And so anyway, Bukaki, um, they were poaching all my guys. I had guys out there because they started stealing Who, them. Who was poaching them? All the, everybody else yeah, started Bo, copying yeah. Bukaki okay. right. and the gang bangs, all the stuff that were going on. So they'd send guys out there and they would pay them to steal from my from my set, go out there and get the numbers and all the guys we had because I was getting them tested. Wow. But in a way that helped me too because it gave them more work. And I was yeah. making the dream a reality because that's, they were getting more work. That's unbelievable. So you're saying Brandon Iron came from there? Brand, no, no. Brandon yeah. Irons, I shot one of his first scenes in America. Yeah. He's from Canada. Right. He was sending me Polaroids back when I was shooting amateur scenes uh-huh. of himself. And I said, sure, come on down. I'll shoot you. Give uh-huh. you, you know, 50 bucks or whatever. And so I shot him. And I like the first time I shot him, I'm like, wow, this guy's going to be a star. And then I immediately put him in a feature back around 95. I wow. put him in a feature huh? that I did for uh, Coastline. They mm-hmm. ended up going to video team. And I always remember, I forget what the 95, gold, huh? 95, 96, maybe it's 96, 97. Mm-hmm. I, the years blend. 96, 97, I shoot him in this feature, and I'll never forget. He walks in the room, and, and the girl's name escapes me, but they were the couple, they were cops from Dallas, Texas, if you remember them. Trust me, you shot her in a movie I produced, you were in. Don't I, you remember Renegades? Yeah. With Buck? Yeah, out there. And Who out were the girls? In Valencia. The and- brunette. 
You were in the movie. Oh, man, that's a lot and you of and me and my wife were hanging out this bar one time. There was a bar over there near Valencia, right? Yes, we were in hanging out there. Yeah. Yeah, we were sitting, sitting in the car. You were showing me a pistol or something. We were in my car. I had a gun on me? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we, were, we, were, we had a gun in my car. I remember yeah. you were showing me a gun. And, and so, anyway, you were in the movie. Alex Sanders was in that movie. Alex too, Sanders right? was in it. Yeah, I remember. Yeah. What was it? The brunette. What was her Fuck, name? I don't know. Anyway, her. Huh. She. I'll never forget. He pulls out his cock. You know, he had a big dick. She goes, "There's a new sheriff in town." I always remember her saying that. What the fuck was her name? That's horrible. Wow, I don't know. Gary was her husband. Ex cop, Dallas, oh, Texas. Oh, okay, I know. Um, Mole. Uh, what the fuck is her name? She died, right? Well, I don't know about that. No. Animal. No, 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 not animal. Not no, animal. Okay. But she's on the cover of that movie, and you're in the movie. So oh, okay. I've shot you. I produce movies that you or you. Her, so right. <laughs> it's like a lot of girls, man. <laughs> whatever her name was. I think about twelve thousand. I don't know. But anyways. Anyway, so that's, that's, that's that that's that is an unbelievable story. Really, that is like priceless. Really, yeah. you're the one. You and Jeff Mike. Jeff Mike actually it was his brainchild. We but we never lied. Wow. We stole it from Japan. That's why we call it American wow. Makaki. It's unbelievable. That's I didn't even know what the hell it meant, but that's what it means. Just. What you know on your face? So yeah, we ended up breaking into Gokum, you know, the swallowing more they had to swallow. We did a lesbian bukkake, but bukkake, you know, oh, a bunch of different wow. series came out of it. Yeah, that sounds nonstop work. <laughs> that's great. So, in your you're saying that's your prime in the turn of the century? That was an era of like I. It put me on the map. People knew me for that. I think they have, most people know me for the bukkake. Well, I knew you from just probably Buck. Yeah, but see, you you know me longer than that, yeah, before yeah. that stuff. And you knew me as a producer. Yeah, I was just... Anyway, I didn't produce the Savannah movie, a lot of that stuff. Oh, you produced you. Savannah? Yeah, don't really? you remember the Savannah, after she died, he made the movie about her? No, I don't know. Oh! He was in love with Rebecca. Right, right. No, because he had that mansion over in Granada Hills. Thank you. Right, I used to go there because he had some girls there. I'd go yes. say hi to him. Yes, you were <laughs> right? always in the movies. Yeah, yeah, right. I was in a lot of Buck's movies. I, I really liked Buck a lot. He was great. He was a cool, and you know, Buck, he kind of talked weird, but my personal opinion, he was pretty intelligent. Okay, Buck was a hustler, and I always tell people that with Buck. You could be broke, down in your luck, nothing is going, and I believe me, I've been there in these situations with Buck, and he would make you feel good about yourself. It'd just be the two of us in the car, yeah. just cruising around, you know, and he'd have to pull over and get a little shot vodka and those liquor stores, and you'd always have to pay for it because he had no money. But... <laughs> Uh, he made you feel good about yourself. I, I liked him a lot. And my wife says the same thing. It's like, Buck, he was great. I mean, I love Buck. Yeah. I mean, so he was lot. We lost him about 10 years ago, I think. Fuck. Probably about that long. At least 10 years ago, I'm pretty sure. Guy at Alec Metro's. Huh? Alec Metro oh, really? was wow. the guy that, he, huh. well, that was his third time he died. Wow. Yeah, he liked the party a little bit, but yeah. we all do. So, yeah, I have a quick story. You know, Buck stayed with me, like I said. But every day, or every night, at the end of the night, most nights, he'd be sitting there watching TV. I had a little apartment over on Reseda Boulevard, right. 7918, something like that near uh, Satakoy, right? And I would, uh, he would sit there drinking uh, whiskey or whatever he was drinking, and then he'd smoking a blunt, and then he'd be doing cocaine, right? He'd be, you know, alternating back and forth, and I would kick him and hit him, just playing with him, but once in a while we'd play around. But that's my memories of Buck. He was cool. He was down. But he had a hell of a personality. Hell of a personality. Yeah. Rest in peace. He was wonderful. I loved him. No, yeah. He fell in love big time all the time. Oh, all yeah. the time. All yeah, the time. Falling in love with somebody else. Said, I love these girls' eyes looking at me. He's melt. He was great. Yeah. He loved the thought of being in love, I think. Buck was, Buck was cool. He's like a... You know, he was a good performer, too. He's a throw... I mean, throwback. He's dead. I'm just saying he's one of those guys, when I think of porn, I think of Buck. You know, because he was the classic. That movie was going to be the movie that made you. He ble He really believed all this. Yeah, no, Buck. He did believe a lot of that stuff. <laughs> okay, oh, here's a movie you're in. I'll tell you a story that involves you. We made a movie called Hell. It ended up being called Hell Rider. It was a Top Gun ripoff. You might remember this one. You're a pilot. You were a pilot. I was in the movie as a non-sex role with you. Really? Don't you remember I started a fight with you in a bar or something? I remember... A little science fiction thing going on in a garage at his mansion with Holly Body being in the set. I really liked her. She was great. But um, is that the movie or no? I don't... That, that time? Okay. 90... 
there's five a, or six or whatever it is. Whatever it was, you're you're a, a pilot. Okay. And I play like a pilot. That's that movie. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. I did not. I used to always get stuck in these non-sex roles because I was a producer. You know, right. so there's no budget to hire somebody. I'd always have to mm-hmm. come in. I did it for Paul Norman. All these guys I used to have to be the. If I was on the set, all of a sudden I had to act back then. Uh-huh, so cool. anyway, fun. It's kind of fun. Before we get the budget for the movie, this is my. I used to always quit two bucks. So we were, I was always on the outs with him too. So he gets me back as his producer because nobody would give him the money because they knew they didn't trust him. But me, they trusted because I'd always pay people back. So if you gave me the check, I wasn't going to go spend it on drugs. Right. right? Your movie <laughs> would arrive. Right. So Buck says, you need to come up with me to San Francisco. We got gets we got pitch David Sturman on this movie. I'm, oh, fine, Buck. So we get these tickets. We fly to San Francisco. I rent a car. We drive over to, you know, GVA. David Sturman is owning... Own GVA, Sin City. No, of course, Sin City, right. Yeah. So we go into his office, and Buck starts pitching Top Gun. Not only were we going to make this movie with you, you were starring in it. Uh-huh. It was going to... We had the man who... In, I was starring? Who invented green screen working on it. And I'm sitting in this meeting with David Sturman. I looked at Buck. I'm like, we do? He goes, yes, Jim. I have the man who invented green screen technology on this movie. And he's describing how we're gonna, you're going to be flying. You're going to see TT Boy flying, fighting in the air and all this stuff. Oh. And I remember just... He said that my name, see TT Boy yeah, yeah. flying? You were going to be in the see, movie. David Sturman liked me. He's always... Buck loved you. Yeah. And, and, David Sturman liked me too. Yeah. He's, so he's throwing out names. Right. And I'm just sitting there going... Okay, how the fuck are we gonna deliver this, right? Oh, that's crazy. And and, t- and he's like, "All right, you guys got it." We walk out. I'm like, "Buck, are you serious? Do you know what you just told him we we're gonna deliver?" He goes, "Don't worry, I got it covered or whatever." I'm like, <laughs> "He's amazing, yeah." So we get the check, right? And then he had that mansion. He goes, "Jim, I need eight thousand dollars." I'm like, "Okay, first of all, they don't you know how it was? They didn't give you all the money up front." Remember, uh-huh. they'd give you a couple right. payments. Yeah. You know how they did it back then. Yeah, yeah. And they knew Buck, right? Yeah. I go, what do you mean you need $8,000? It goes to the movie. We went to this budget. We turned in the budget. I know where all the money goes. You don't have $8,000. He goes, we're shooting the whole movie at, at the mansion. But he had to decorate the mansion. He was decorating the mansion because he was in love with What's-Her-Face, Rebecca Wild, and he was trying to get her to move in. He, and there was nothing in there. Oh, my God, really? So we went and bought $8,000 worth of furniture to decorate that place. Don't you remember? Because you were hanging there all the time. Well, I was there here and there. Was some it, it girls were like, hanging out. How are we going to finish this? Wow. It, so he spent the money. He was, <laughs> we, well, it was, was like, crazy. you know, back in those days, I'm guessing it was probably a $35,000 budget. Yeah. It was one of the ones where mm-hmm. we had to do the trip up there versus the $25,000 one. You didn't have to do the trip up because we had to do the song oh, and I dance, really? pitch it. Wow. And David Sturman even told me later, he goes, I, he goes, I don't care. He goes, I just love seeing his song and dance. He's great. Buck was great. He even told me that. So... Buck. All right, so let's move on off Buck. But Buck, you got rest, you know, rest in peace, Buck. You're great. And uh, his sister, of course, was Amber Lynn. Yeah. The famous, famous, cool, smart, strong Amber Lynn. So I think a lot of people might want to know the really truth, what you brought up a little while ago. The mystique behind the fluffers. Tell, <laughs> because no I know, yeah, tell the world the mystique behind the fluffers. Because you're in an area where there might be fluffers because the guys were sometimes mediocre. Sure. So okay. tell me. All right. First of all, there's no such thing as fluffers and porn sets. Where the term comes from, okay, there's always fluffing on porn sets if the right girl's there. A lot of times back in those days, they'd have... Their girlfriend might show up and be, you know, getting the guy hard for the scene or whatever. You'd have some of that with the guys who couldn't get it hard. Uh-huh. But nobody ever hired a girl just to sit there and suck guys' dicks. No, I didn't. No. You know, I mean, did you? No, of course not. You and, know what I mean? But look at but, but 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 sometimes, right, like, go ahead. But the gangbangs, on the world record gangbangs, we had fluffers so they were hard to enter the stage. So we would set up a row of four girls sucking dicks. Because we needed to, because we were running it like an assembly line. Those, because we had to have them hard to get up on stage. Uh-huh. That's where we really had fluffers. That's, but typical yeah. porn said, no, I've never hired a no. fluffer. No. I mean, I've never seen one. But we know that if the guy, right, this is the time you might see a fluffer, but not a real fluffer. But if the guy can't get going, you right. know, which was common oh, hell all yeah. over the place, you know, I mean, and um, then... You would ask, the director might ask another female sure. star, hey, 
this, you know, this girl either can't do it right or the guy's not attracted to her or blah, 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 blah. So sometimes a girl would step in, which made the other girl feel insecure and they pissed off. They get mad, off. too. Yeah, it's crazy, right? And so that's how I've seen fluffers. That's about it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, anyway. look, at the, I, I guess I've done things like that before where we've had girls hang around on the set, give her extra money. Hey, you just want to blow these guys? But it wasn't planned. You know, it didn't do it ahead of time. Yeah. Yeah. It really, the, the truth is, for the world out there, if you don't do your job right in the adult business, in the in our day, in my right. day, then get the fuck out of here. You're you're done. You're pretty much done. Right. If you couldn't get hard, and that's what killed a lot of the guys' careers, like Cal Jammer, yeah. you know, Wayne Summers. Mm -hmm. These guys just couldn't do it. Yeah. Even Jonathan Morgan. Realize, there's, I always tell people, I think being a male porno performer is probably the hardest job in the world. It's harder than being an astronaut. Guys can't do it. No. There's so few, especially back in the days before Viagra. Yeah. And big sets and pressure, big oh, directors, yeah. all that, all that, you know, wild stuff. You needed guys with big egos like you that could pull it off. And Buck. Yeah, Buck was great. John Doe. I mean, there were guys like Rocco, obviously. Rocco was great, yeah. Uh, I'm trying to... Jerry Pike. He's, he's a nice guy, but I don't think he was 100% natural, so I don't know if... You know. What was he taking back then? That's why I heard it. I heard he yeah, I, He's a real cool guy, so I don't talk shit yeah. about him. He was good. He was cool. He was a nice guy. But none of those guys could keep up with me. No. Well, you, you were, think so? I mean... You were extreme. You were good. No, you were like a rare case. I mean, there's guys that now would fall in like your shoes. I'd probably tell you the other days. I'd mm -hmm. drop in like a Charles Darrow would be a, a newer equivalent of you. Mm -hmm. But without Viagra, without, could he keep up with me? I don't know. I could do four scenes a day. Yeah, back then, and who was doing that? Nobody. 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 Matter of fact, you know, some of the actors, numerous actors, wouldn't work side by side with me. Yeah, well, a lot of them were intimidated. So I'm saying. Yeah, I but, mean, you really only had Rocco. Running yeah, with you. Rocco was my nemesis, right? He's great. He was a great, great performer. He's a great performer, whatever. And uh, yeah. Yeah, Rocco was in your day. If I had the only one. Because Buck was a lot older than you. Yeah, yeah, Buck was not. Buck was on, you know, and he wasn't always focused. He's on drugs. You know what I mean? So, <laughs> but you know, he was, he was a real guy and he was great. But yeah. he's not really, I, I don't think he would hit my level really as a director and all that stuff. Because I kept working and working and yeah. working, you know. I worked, I did a lot of movies. I did 3,000 movies in a short time. Anyways, so back to um, what is a stunt cock? Okay, stunt cock, which I just had to do last week. Okay. A stunt cock is the guy who will come in, oftentimes the other male actor on the set when the guy's having hard on problems. So let's say I shoot you and, and you're, I'm shoot, you're doing a sex scene and you can't get your dick hard. Well, I'll still shoot it as a director where I don't see your dick in there for softcore and I'll bring the stunt cock over to fill in the hardcore for me. And Have stunt you... cocking happens all the time. Oh yeah, how often does it happen? Fuck. Just did it last week for a scene. Really? Yeah. I, I'm not, uh, the guy could not get his dick hard. Had Rob, I'll tell you, saved our day was uh, uh, Rob, uh, oh God, what's his name? Come on, help me here. Black guy. Really good. Who's the really top black guys right now? I don't even know. I'm not even around. Anyway, Rob, whatever. Rob Piper. Rob Piper stepped Rob in. Rob Piper, right. Rob Piper steps in and stunt cocked the scene for the guy who fell on his face. Really? No. Literally three positions. And I did them all soft with the one guy, and then I filled in the hardcore. Yeah, cool. Happens all the time. So it's still happening, huh? Even with even with Viagra, huh? Unbelievable, huh? Well, well we you hired talk. these guys as huge dicks, and they can't get them hard. Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, before Viagra, remember yeah. Shawn Michaels was one of the only people that was really Shawn doing Michaels was a, was a rarity. For his, I mean, come on. He yeah. was very rare. He's great, right? You didn't see too many guys that dick that long that could get it hard naturally. Right. He's a real guy. Yeah, he real was performer. real. He was good, too. He, the girls loved him. He was great. Oh, yeah. Well, he had the whole... Uh, he is charming. Yeah, he's great. Charming, dressed nice. You know, he had that down. <laughs> I, I want to see if you can tell me or explain to me what is the best excuse... You've heard from a girl not for a no show or being later, just the best excuses. Some of the examples. Oh my God. Well, you get so many of them. You've heard them all. Yeah, I, I mean, it happens to me all the time. What are you talking about? Every day we get one. 
Yeah, you know, the grandmother dies. You have, well, jail's a good one. When they do call you, they're in jail. Like mm-hmm. I just had a, a Maya one where she calls me if she just got released from jail and she's clearing San Bernardino and she couldn't make it. But at least she called me, which was nice. I've had the girls call up. They'd just done too much heroin and they could barely talk. Wow, really? And they were somewhere where they could barely speak and everything. Uh, yeah. Heroin or cocaine, you think? Heroin in this case. Really? Wow. Uh, I've had a, you know, like, I'm trying to think. I've had the mothers call me. I've really? had the boyfriends call me. <laughs> they're scared shitless to call them. Well, because they, they, they're all high. I know what's going on. They're high. <laughs> That's a great one. <laughs> You know, we got you got a face. This is what people got to understand. We, especially in the early days, right? Yeah. When you're doing porn, having it's like like you just landed in the Pinocchio world, right? Right? It's the land that when that place that's all fun and games, right? You remember that Pleasure Island or something, right? Yeah, yeah. Whatever the island whatever was, you went to sure something, and that's what it was. It was just a beautiful, beautiful symphony of sex and money, and some people did drugs, but it's just fun, freedom, not well. Freedom. Where else? Let me ask you, TT. Is a girl who's barely out of high school going to make thirty thousand dollars in a month? Exactly, uh, being eighteen, nineteen years old in the nineties. Yeah, and the problem with it is they usually have friends that aren't some don't have that money. So guess who's paying for them to go to the clubs? Yeah, and paying because it's sin oh. money. So they're th- burning through that money. Yeah. And they have all this money, and their friends don't have any money because they might be working in whatever, going to school or having whatever job. They're people their age, so uh, I, it's. I mean, it's, you can get caught up in it easy. Oh yeah, I mean, you know, that's the girls. You know, I don't want to go there because it takes. I, I want to go other places, but yeah, I mean, the girls, a pretty girl with big tits, blonde, right, could make so much money in six months. She can make. Probably two hundred thousand dollars in six months if she, she could do two three scenes a day, sure. right? I mean, I've, we see some girls come around. Oh yeah. That, I mean, over you know, at Jim's office, they were just you know they would make two three thousand dollars a day and they could work twenty thirty days. That's some girls that must have made fifty thousand sixty thousand dollars in a month easily. Oh yeah. Normal girls that become stars, but they're just normal eighteen year old nineteen year old girls that were working at in out hamburger pretty soon they're making sixty thousand dollars. Having a time of their life. It's oftentimes very short lived, though. I mean, oh, yeah. that's the problem. They, mm. they crash get, and burn. They, they they date these guys that are in bands. You know what happens? They get these leeches taking all the money from them. Uh, sometimes. You know, they get pulled out of the business. You know what happens? Yeah, like, they have fun too. They just buy yeah. everything. It's so, fun. Yeah. Well, look at her. okay. There was this girl, and she shows up on set, and she's making money, and she and we're like. She's showing us these shoes. She spent like 2000 bucks on this pair of shoes. And Johnny thrusts, and we're looking at him. We're like, why would you spend $2,000 on a pair of shoes? And she's like, because I'll never be able to do it this again in my life. Because yeah. I'll never be able to go in a store and throw down money like this. Is it that redhead he was going out with? No, it wasn't Johnny's friend. This is Sasha, huh. Sasha Knox. Oh, okay. And that really resonated with me. I'm like, wow. So I told my wife that. I'm like, She's like, she's right. She goes, I'll never be able to do this again in my life. Yeah. Let's go back to that. How did you meet your wife? On a set. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm like, um, yeah, I always warn people, don't don't date a porn girl. <laughs> well, yeah, she, I, before yeah. I met her, I just show up on sets. I, I remember when I first, Buck brought me out here, before we even shot that movie, he brought me to a porn set. I banged a girl that day. I met her on the set. I'm like, what the fuck? He takes me to a party back at Tony Montana's. I just get a girl. She takes me back to her hotel room because I was a young producer in my 20s or whatever. That's the best. I'm like, this is like shooting fish in a pot, in a barrel. I mean, what? this is amazing. Like, we're better than a band, right? Oh, yeah. It well, was nuts. All I had to do is say I was producing a movie and some girl was grabbing me. To me. That was great, right? Freedom. It was nuts. Well, it scared me. I, he brings me in a set. And keep in mind, I was like 28 or whatever. So I was younger. Cause you thought I was older, you know, younger than I am. Yeah. And, and so I, I look pretty young. And I walk on the set. Some guy was having a hard on problem, and I don't know where we were, but Buck was bringing me to all these sets because we were, we were meeting all the people for the movie. You know how Buck would do this, and so we're going over to some set, and and the girl goes, "What about that guy?" Points at me when I walk in the set. Why don't you have him come stunt cock it? Well, I first, and I'm like, "What the fuck?" 
But that's what it was like back then. Yeah, yeah, cool. I just walked onto the set, and the girl said that. Wow. It was amazing. So you met Gail on yeah. that same... No, no, not. Uh, when I did that return, I did that first movie. That, that movie I sold to Kevin Beecham. The second movie I did. Oh, yeah? That quick, huh? Yeah. What year was that? 92. And you just love at first sight? Or yeah, what? yeah. We were like, we hit it off. Yeah. And so we were like married within a couple of months. Wow, really? Yeah. And you're still married? We're still together. Now, that's 27 years? Yeah. <laughs> Holy fuck, yeah. Wow, man. That's crazy. That's She's crazy. a She was always really cool. Yeah. I worked with her, I think. Yeah, you knew her. Yeah, no, I knew her. Didn't know her that. She was always know. the production manager for Buck and stuff, yeah. too. Yeah. No, I worked with her once yeah. or twice. I just remember because I remember seeing her name in the 80s. Yeah. Kill Force, right? And right. also into, you know, the adult movies like, I get to work with a star. Boom, bam. You know, because she was kind of like, for me, all the girls in those days when you saw them in a the movie, it wasn't so much production going on. In the 80s, they were stars, right? right. It was totally different. Yeah. I tell people that now, even in the early 90s, when you went on a set, you didn't call all these girls sluts, whores, or anything. They were stars yeah, in the future so, sets. Some were superstars. Right. Yeah. The, the amateur world was a little bit different, uh -huh. but even then, there were so, like guys like you, like you said, would come to these amateur scenes. We'd get those girls too, right, when they're brand new, yeah. before they hopped onto the feature train. I mean, I didn't do that many amateurs because I was too busy yeah. working, but when I did, in the very beginning, right, yeah. probably like 91. Yeah. Well, I was in 89, but, you know. For who? Who would you shoot you in amateurs? Who I can't even remember, but, uh, I mean, Charlie Biggs was shooting amateurs. That's 90, you know what I mean? Yeah, Charlie. God, that's a name. Yeah, Charlie Biggs, you said he passed, huh? I heard that. Yeah. Well, he but was a cool guy. nobody knows him anymore. No, he just, yeah, he wasn't in great shape back in the 90s. You know, when, when I heard he passed, I'm like... I thought he died 10 years ago. That guy was in such yeah. bad shape. Come on, the yeah. 90s, that guy. When did you ever see him without a cigarette? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I know that I moved up pretty fast, you know, in the ranks. Yeah. But he had me on in the very beginning, you know? Well, he was a feature guy. Yeah, he put, but he put me in all these movies, and I spent a lot of time. We were in Arrowhead. We are all over the place, and I, I liked him a lot. He was a cool, cool guy. You really know nice I mean? guy. Very cool guy, and... Yeah, I just, you know, whatever. But Well, you shot for Fred Lincoln, too, all the time. Yeah, yeah. I shot for anybody, you know, everybody. You know what I mean? They would, yeah, you know. Fred and Patty. Yeah, Fred and Patty, big time. I mean, you know, Patty brought in a lot of great girls, Zara White. Oh, my God, she was gorgeous. She was beautiful. That's the one girl I always dreamed of shooting. Lethal Passion. Buck did that movie. Lethal Passion. That was... Okay, he did that movie when we were on one of our sabbaticals because that was right after <laughs> Speed Trap. And I was pissed at him for a couple of years. It would always be yeah. like that. It'd be a year off. I quit on the Beavis and Butthead. Were you in that one? Uh, I fucking had it I with him. I think so, yeah. Then I quit. Then he came back again for the Babe Watches with me because yeah. I ended up funding the Babe Watches for him. Are you, I mean, to me, it sounds like you've taken some beatings. Oh, my God. I okay, I tell people I've, I've lost money hundreds of times in porn. Hundreds, Fuck, but I've made money thousands. Uh -huh. Well, you're a real tough guy. I didn't know you're yeah. that tough. Or yeah. Rough. So See, that's a that's a, that's a emotional and that's a strain. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's a strain yeah I've me. lost money. Yeah, tons of times. I tell people that. Yeah, it's like, look, you got to throw the dice, especially if you're a producer. Uh -huh. You know, you know that. I mean, I was lucky enough not to get beat up too much, but yeah. I mean, I got beat up. Other ways, right? But yeah. Yeah, but you know, you lose money sometimes. Come on, you yeah. made movies that lost money, I'm sure. No. Never? Not no. one. Wow. Well, I was very, I'm very good at math and I right. always watched my budgets carefully. Right. And I knew what I, you know, I just was on it pretty, pretty close. I just look at it as like, you got to have a bunch of things going at all the time because you're going to lose on some. Yeah. And win on the other. And they're just movies. You're just throwing, you know, a lot of times shit against the wall. Yeah. Jeff Mike taught me that. Yeah. He used to say the same thing. Some of them we'd miss on. Yeah. No, no. I've seen some miss. I didn't lose money, but yeah. I made money. But some of them yeah. you make money. But it sounds to me like he was really making money. Oh, he, Great. Was, he was killing it. God bless him. Let me ask you a question. So what actresses comes to your mind, you know, the porn stars, you know, that were unbelievable, you know, Pretty and great performers. Which ones come to your mind from the 90s to 2000 until today? Oh, man. That's... You know, pick five. Fuck. I see... Okay. I have, like, different eras. I look at the mid-90s 
because that's when Debbie Diamond got really wild. She was great. She was just so yeah. over the top by mid nineties. Uh-huh. You know, because yep. remember, she was kind of quiet in the beginning, and it was not that she was probably ever really quiet, but you know what I mean. If you look that, back at her uh, old movies, to compared to what she turned into, she turned into a beast, yeah. strong, yeah. And she was just scary. People were scared of her. You know, the, you know, like yeah. you said, she was intimidating. She, uh, yeah, she, I mean, I don't. I mean, you have to be a professional. There's no way in hell you can work with Debbie Diamond and be an amateur. I mean, like here's names that really I remember just some crazy things. Candy Apples was another girl. I loved her. She was cool. Literally, she had a girlfriend that was so pretty. I went to their house. Ooh. This brown haired girl had a Chandler? big fat one. The way I loved it. Chandler? And, huh? Chandler. Maybe. I can't remember. They were in Orange County. This is whatever year. I can't remember. But her friend, I went down there for her friend. Her friend was great. Anyways, maybe. Candy uh, Apples. Oh, I know who you're talking about. You're talking about when they first got in, yeah, the friends exactly. you had, who did not last Brown long. Brown hair, short haircut. Right, who did not last long. Right. She was gorgeous. Gorgeous, yeah. yeah. And gorgeous. she was great. Should... We got a, a little thing, but yeah. Um, but Candy Apples was a real cool chick. What's up? Candy Apples was way cool. Okay, Candy Apples, Debbie Diamond. Um, I mean, see, I always, you stumped me on things like that, but if we start talking about girls, they start popping into my head. I mean, she's was... a great girl to bring up. Candy Apples was strong. She loved to get... Abused. She could do anything. She wanted me to spank her so hard she started. Candy Apples could just grab a baseball bat, shove it up. She was wow. elastic. I swear to God, she was elastic. She was like a Gumby. I mean, she's a, she's probably one of the girls that I'm kinda, still friends with her. It, yeah, she's probably one of the girls that kind of slipped through the cracks and never got her just due. She was Bowen's contract girl, if you remember, for a while. John Bowen, what's up, man? Call me because I miss you if you're watching us. I didn't know he was still alive. Is he? I didn't think so. Really? I don't know. He's like one of those guys I haven't heard from. Yeah, I mean, I don't think he was in great shape, so maybe, yeah. Oh, he was 60 in the 90s, wasn't he? No. Dude, come on, he had white hair. Yeah. He had pure white hair. You he, he flew me to Thailand for TT's Oriental Adventure in 1991. It was radical. The guy, but, yeah. He's got to be, if he's alive, 90 years old. He was 60 really? back then, I think. Are you sure? <sighs> well, maybe you're right. Then he's probably not alive. He had like white hair. Yeah, well, I hope he's alive. He's a cool. I really liked him a lot. Yeah, I mean, I don't. I'd be shocked if he was alive just because of his age and yeah. you know how he was. He was cool. Yeah. A lot of people didn't like him, but I really liked him. He, he was, was cool. a character. He was like a uh, old carnival huckster. Yeah, he really was. He, you see, you would see his character in a lot of movies playing like the yeah. guy making a master plan, right? Well, I mean, he had that, but he was still debonair. Well, he had that cool accent. He was yeah, English he was cool. or whatever, so he sounded debonair. Okay, back to girls. Uh, okay, I always loved this one girl. and You'd probably remember her. She was like Swedish or something, and she oh, she's so beautiful. Huh. And I shot her so many times. This is so terrible. I'm not even. I took her one time to the beach to this great cover for Puritan Video Magazine, where I had her on the beach wearing a gas mask on her face. And I wish I could remember her name. That was she was not my, Barbie doll, not Barbie girl. No, no, she was French. Oh, okay. Barbie doll was French. What is she doing? Um, then about 97, there was a pretty... Well, yeah, I, I shot a movie I produced. You were in. I think you might have... Mm-hmm. Her. The Buck Mansion days. That's yeah. where I met her, was at that house. Oh, yeah? Huh. Lena. Lena a, oh, yeah. was a re- was, great girl from then. She was cool. She didn't like me putting the juice to her too much, but yeah. I'm trying to think. <laughs> but she was sexy. She was great. Yeah, she was cool. Yeah. She I, was nice. She was, she was good. I'm just... Yeah, I'm at a loss. It's one of those I start they po- start popping into my head afterwards. It's not like, yeah, the girls that you always were working with, right? Yeah, not all the VCA girls and stuff, right? Well, I would shoot them too. The Shayla Laveaux of the world, yeah. the Kylie Ireland, Kylie Ireland. She was great. Uh, you know, we did a that lesbian gangbang on her. You know, after the VCA contract. Oh, really? Okay. Uh, yeah, I would, all these girls I'd shoot. They'd be uh-huh. in the Babe watches. Yeah, Kylie was there. She was yeah. wonderful. I, uh, and Holly Body was there, remember? Holly, Holly Body was there. But look at, look at Holly, for instance. To me, that was a girl that I couldn't count on. You know what I mean? I shot Holly a lot of times through the years, and she'd come back and whatever, and she'd be like drunk, and her mom would be on the set. She'd be doing a scene. I remember, oh, really? clam it, mom! His mom's making... Oh, <laughs> really? Oh, yeah, in the middle of fucking. Oh, wow. like, you know... Um, she was, she was mixed with Guamanian. Uh, yeah. That's wild. Holly right? was cool, but as a producer, a director, a cameraman. Yeah, you know, right, I got you. You know what I mean? I'm, yeah. Like when you say, I've talked, to me, it's girls. Debbie, say what you want about her. 
She'd get to set. I loved her. She She'd deliver great. the goods. She uh-huh. wouldn't flake. So to me, yeah. I, I'm saying girls to me that I could count on. I mean, candy apples you could count uh-huh. on. You know, uh, you know. To me, those are girls to me that are Brittany O'Connell, a girl from the early I loved '90s. Her. Brittany mid, O'Connell, early to so mid '93, '94 era. She was great. I'm just letting you know in a scene. She was just yeah. so great. Caitlin Ashley, another one who recently passed. Whoa, really? Last month. What the fuck? Yeah. She was young. 40s, but which is odd for a woman to wow, pass. Wow, why'd she pass? I don't know. Health issues, I heard. Wow, yeah. that's terrible. She had yeah. kids and everything. She left the business a long time ago. Yeah. Oh, okay. So, uh, yeah, she was a nice person. She, yeah, she was really a sexual da- dynamo. Yeah, okay. she was huh. good. Oh. Well, uh, yeah. World is changing. Brianna Banks, that was another one. Oh, she was Brianna young. Banks Bree was, was great. Unbelievable. Another wild one. See, I love Brianna. I did one of her first scenes, and Brianna Banks, for Mirage. me, Talk when she's Mirage. Yeah, Mirage. When she's Mirage, at my, you know, when I just you know, was producing myself. For sure, she's one of the best girls and one of the best scenes yeah. I ever shot, and I shot all kinds. She was unbelievable. Look at natural D's. Perfect. Like Raven, but that was kind of before my time. I, my first movie was starring Raven, but mm-hmm. she was amazing. She was beautiful. She's so sexy and it's such a good scene, but it's kind of like, I didn't really work with her, you know what I mean, later, because I, I produced it and knew her, but... You I know. work with her a lot. Yeah, so you know her more than me. In the back room. She was great. Oh, she was wonderful. Uh, she was very cool. Yeah, but we can start throwing out tons of girls now once you start rolling on okay. some of these good ones. But we got we got that down. Yeah. That's, uh, those are great girls. Raven, yeah. But so um do you have you directed mainstream movies? Yeah, I did a couple. Yeah? What were they called? I did one called Betrothed, Nightmare Turn. Horrible. Uh, what, really? <laughs> so bad it's almost good. And I shot uh Deadly Famous, another one. Did Produced. they do any good? No. B movies. I mean, they're out there. They're on VOD, all sorts of crap, horror movies. But I didn't make any money off them. Oh no, he lost again. Yeah. Fuck. Well, not technically no, because I was hired to do Betrothed. Oh, okay. Now keep in mind, I own a piece in it, so I get a write off each year. You know, they paid me a little to do it. The other one I put the money for, my partner, you know, my band, and this other guy. So we basically paid for it. But it wasn't that much we lost. Whatever. Uh huh. Oh, okay. <laughs> I have a crazy question. Okay. Okay. Regarding film. How, have you noticed that China is taking over, kind of, and we've seen so many more Asian co stars in the movies than we ever saw before? Well, it's not just China. You're talking about India, you know, no, Bollywood. But, you know, talk- Bollywood's got their own stuff, but that's a totally different look. I'm mm-hmm. talking about, I'm watching the movies probably about. 75% of the movies I'm watching now are putting the Asian co-stars, which is so unlike Hollywood, so indifferent, you know what I mean? And I think a lot of Asian girls are unbelievable, beautiful, you know what I mean? But I'm just saying, have you noticed this recent trend? Just on the, on the mainstream... Yeah, totally. Tip. I watch Netflix. For yeah. Okay, I'm hooked on Netflix. Half the shows I watch are there are German, Eastern European... Hong Kong or whatever. So I watch a lot of these things. I'll watch this with the subtitles or whatever. So, but I'm talking American movies. Yeah, well, you're talking cause, because they're sold globally. Yeah. Where do you think they're selling this oh, stuff? Yeah, they got 4 billion people in Asia. Yeah. You, you're, but, you're, they're sold globally, and every country now has a movie industry. And blockbusters now, I mean, look, everything has to be very diversified now because they're going after all these markets. Yeah. I want everybody to watch it. You have yeah. to. I just, what do you think about it? Nothing. I don't really. Yeah. Yeah. There's really nothing to think about. It's nothing really. To, I mean, it doesn't just, bother me. It's just like something a, to bring up because it's interesting. You know, it's interesting to see this. But if you know business, you know that's the reason. Yeah, but see, I, and personally, on a sexual level, I prefer mixed race women anyway. Well, I like Asian. I women. like I like a white girl mixed with Mexican. I love that. I like or it I all. Like yeah. Black mixed with white. I'm, I personally, I like I like the mixed ones. My I, wife says she's. I like it with a little salsa. You know, no, a little uh, spice to everything. I think it's great. I think I like the Asian girl mixed with black. I like an Asian girl mixed with white. Korean. I, I white. like an Asian girl mixed with. It's a great mix. With Spanish. I mean, it really is a beautiful blend. Yeah, I love the blended girls. It's my, you know, yeah, you know, I love, yeah, you, yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let me let's think. That, will Asian men ever become porn stars? What? 
<laughs> I'm just asking. They were in Bukaki, but what do you think? I've shot some Japanese stars. It yeah. was amazing. The problem with porn is you got to have a big dick. Mm-hmm. And I just haven't had a lot of Asian guys with big dicks in porn. Yeah. And I think that's the thing that's holding them back is they have to have a huge cock to really be. You got, I mean, a decent sized cock. You know that. Yeah, right. There is prerequisites to becoming a star. Right. Or even a good all around performer. And I just haven't seen too many. We yeah. don't have a lot. Yeah, that's, that's the pretty much why I asked the question. Yeah, we, and I, I've tried them. It's a kid in mind. Bakaki, Bakaki, you didn't care where, you know, you name it. You can be from wherever we used it. Nigerian, Indian, whatever. It didn't matter. Because uh-huh. you could be this small. Oh, and that's be... what I want to know. That question right there. What's the smallest you ever saw oh in Bukaki? I've sh- seen Bukaki's. I think the man came from a hair. It was so small. No, no, come on. I don't know where it came from. He was beating it. It was like this small. Come on. I'm not making this up. And it squirted out of the batch of hair. I could not see his penis. Oh. The cum squirted out of the hairball. Oh, my God. Really? His pubic hair. It was so small. But I mean, you're showing me like a half an inch. Yes. It was like a hand. No, come on. I'm not making this up. Come on. Now, keep in mind, his pubic hair was pretty long. It was probably this long. His pubic hair was a big batch of big black pile down there. And it's were beating off like that. The cockies, we used to have guys that penises that big. You know, like they'd have to shake it. The smallest was that big. It must have been that big. That's fucking crazy. Yeah. Wow. His career did not go too far in porn. <laughs> oh, poor guy. That's, that's a, like you've been cursed. That's a curse. Oh my God. That's, that sucks. Huh. So, you told me, you know, that you shoot a lot of TVs. TSs, excuse me. Okay. <laughs> <All right. laughs> bang, bang. <laughs> yes, I do. So, are they, you know, do they with Viagra? Are they become stronger, or have they? Are they always been good performers? I don't know anything about okay. them really. The trans girls, trans has really changed a lot since the nineties. You remember when it was called she male, right? Yeah. All this stuff. Now it's trans. Um, yeah, they. Okay, they're usually on so many hormones and everything like that. It's like I really the new way of shooting is I don't shoot a trans woman like a man like they used to, where you you're having banging the guy, butt-fucking the guy. It's usually the guy is doing the trans girl because she's a girl. So it's just like doing a girl. So, but yeah, if they're taking Viagra, their dicks can get hard. But it's not like because they're on all the hormones and the blockers and everything, you can't expect them to have you know deliver as if you know they weren't on it because uh-huh. they're taking hormones and everything. So, so generally they can't do the job that well, you're saying? Well, I'm saying they get a hard on, but not too many can really f- lay it down like the typical male performer can. But if you had one, and maybe some do, then it's some, a superstar or what? Yeah, but it's a very short-lived period of time they can do it in because of everything they're taking nowadays. Oh, yeah? Okay. They're on a lot of inhibitors and stuff. They can't do it. So physically, I don't expect them to be able to come. They don't have any come. Oh, wow. I don't expect okay. them. Sometimes they can come, and depending how long they are along in the process of you know fully becoming a woman, the feminization things they have to do, it's... It's amazing what they go through. Wow. Yeah. You know, the facial They really start surgeries. changing, don't they? Well, they're doing the the voice. You have to change the voice box, Adam's apple, the facial feminization of the face, hairline, all sorts of stuff. You know, breast implants, whether uh-huh. they have the testicles removed or not. Wow. There's so many things they're doing. You know, it's like... I know that one time, me, Peter North, and I can't remember, a couple other actors saying Croy. I said Croy. And somebody, we dressed up like girls for one of the movies, and I was the ugliest looking girl you ever saw in your life. Movie. I remember that movie. St. Croix liked it. <laughs> I was the ugliest. I can never be a woman. But uh, <laughs> Yeah, but it, that's more of like being a transvestite. That's oh, yeah? not, a, trans, a trans woman is somebody belie- that are inside, it's a woman trapped inside. And you're doing a... You're just cross-dressing or being a transvestite. Oh, okay. a man dressing as a woman is what a transvestite is. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, really. Yeah. So then... They're doing things to block facial hair. I mean, think mm-hmm. all the stuff you have to do. The hormones mm-hmm. are taking and everything. It's serious stuff, yeah. Oh, fuck yeah. It's, I mean, mentally it's all powerful, huh? And yeah. trans men, look what they're going through. Women transforming that's to men. That's uh, Bruce Jenner, right? No, uh, yes, yes. Huh. No, no, no. That, that's a trans woman. Bruce Jenner's a trans, trans right. woman. 
Okay. But trans man is a woman turning into a man. Like Chaz oh. Bono. Chaz Bono, for instance. Oh, really? Wow. Yeah, I heard about I was watching something from about Cuba. Wow, that's... They're heavy. taking the hormones and everything, and they grow the lamb chops and everything, and they tend to put on the weight and everything. Lamb chop fate? Yeah, you know, they grow those beards. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, they, it always seems to grow down here. I don't know why. Wow. Well, they always have that look. Okay. All right, tell me about, I know you told me earlier, you shot the John Wayne Bobbitt? Yeah, I shot the second uh, Bobbitt movie where he did the penis job, Frank and Penis. So, so what was that? Okay. John Wayne Bobbitt, for people that don't remember, had his dick cut off by his wife, because, Lorena, uh, Lorena Bobbitt, because he was very abusive. I don't, let's just I don't know what took uh-huh. place, but so after he gets it put back on, he decides Mark Carrier offers him money to make a porno. Uh-huh. Ron, Ron Jeremy, G- Ron yeah. Jeremy shoots it. Ron then, Jeremy shoots it or produces it. Produces it. Because okay. Ron Jeremy really just sits there and falls asleep. Okay. So Ron Jeremy, <laughs> Ron Jeremy produces it. The then the sequel. Now by this time, I became Ron Jeremy's cameraman. Uh-huh. Right about this, right after he did the first Bobbitt. So I, when by the time Bobbitt comes back, Bobbitt says, "You know that first movie did so well. I am going to, and I did so well in that movie. I'm going to get my penis enlarged." Now, if you remember, mid '90s, '94, '95, '96, they started doing these weird penis jobs. Uh-huh. Yeah. And what they do is they inject fat. It looked like a pig in a blanket around the penis and pulled it out or something to make it longer. And they injected the fat, so it looked just like a big pig in the blanket. And I heard it was dangerous. Well, yeah, because well, we all know the story of what happened to Rex. And That's everything. what I was gonna say, Rex. Rex, I love okay. Rex. Here's how Rex fucked up. up. You knew Rex. I'm surprised yeah. you knew Rex. Yeah. Wow. Well, Rex is dead. You know what happened yeah. to Rex. So. Well, yeah. I mean, let me tell you it. Because I know the guy took care of him when he had the penis job. What Mark Carrier would do is, like, I'm thinking about getting one of these penis jobs. Tell you what, I'm a little worried about it. If you want to get one, I'll pay for it for you just so I can see how it works. Rex says, that's a great idea. You know this. Uh, yeah, let's, let me tell you about Rex real quick. Rex was the Carrier's agent, uh, the guy that would go out and scout, let's say scout. Scout the pretty girls all right. over. But he brought in Savannah, I'm pretty sure. He was a smooth, good-looking operator. Director, who, producer. Director, producer who was so cool that you wanted to be his friend. Yeah. And, you know, and that's, you know, he just was smooth. Well, Rex goes and gets the penis job. He's looking at this big tool. and The doctor says, do not use it, Rex, for a couple months or something. He used it. It got infected. It got gangrene. I knew the guy that was his caregiver and had to go over there and everything. He almost lost his dick because he fucking used it because he was so big and sitting staring at him, he had to use it. And it got infected. And that's what you're talking about, right? Right, right? yeah. It's So, look, it. obviously these things did not work well because I remember shooting a guy... Wolfgang had a penis job and he used to have to stick a needle in there to get it hard but he didn't want to tell anybody back in those days that he was having to do Caverjack and the girl goes to give him a blow job and comes up with blood on her face because he stuck it in the head area and I'm like what the fuck I'm trying why didn't you you know because he had to sneak the needle in because he didn't really know how to do it because they couldn't get him hard because they're so big all of a sudden wow. these horrible penises. I know Wolfgang I don't know that guy he was a guy from Germany Right. And he was, whatever, during that era, was trying to get into porn and had his penis done like this. Wow. But it didn't work. So anyway, that's what, that's what happened to Rex. So, but you, I know Rex died, but how did he die? Well, here's how I heard Rex died. It did not die from the penis. Oh, that's why I had heard, yeah. No. It got gangrene, they, whatever. But, I think he was having major erection issues after because of the thing. But, but the, once again, it's because he also didn't, follow the protocol with the doctors. And this is what I heard, you know, mm-hmm. the stories. And I actually heard it from the guy who was his caregiver, was telling me he did not follow the protocol, and that's why he was brought over there is because of what he did. That's he a, wasn't supposed to fuck with it so fast. I mean, do you understand what you're saying? Gangrene on your penis? That's the scariest Dead. thing in when, yeah, when the scary. Some, yeah. Yeah, they almost had to have it removed. Fuck, horrible. And we were talking about Bobbitt, so we should go back yeah, to yeah. this. Anyway, back to the, my Bobbitt story. No, so good. So how did Rex die? Oh, here's how I heard Rex die. He died in Long Beach. And you know how those hotels are real close to the street downtown Long Beach? Uh-huh. You know, yeah. Like anywhere, I guess. Big hotel. You look straight down the street. He was partying out of his mind and drugs or whatever. It's the story. They're throwing parties. A, 
and they call the cops and he won't uh, open the for security the hotel room and the cops show up and everything and the, the story i heard he's out of his fucking mind jumps off of his balcony and, and lands on the cop car trying to wipe out the cops too that's the story i heard trying to wipe out the cops yeah fuck you coppers jumps out on the how road. high 10 stories up oh that's terrible. I liked him. He was but cool. That's the story of how Rex died. Oh, wow, that's fucking crazy. All right, yeah. let's go back. That's so crazy. So I don't remember who told me. It was one of his friends or whatever at the wow. time when it happened. That's crazy. Back yeah. to Bobbitt. Okay, back. To, so Bobbitt goes and gets his penis job. And they film the surgery and everything. Goes to Carrier. I want you. You want me to film it? You need me to give me money? Blah, blah, blah. Carrier says, you know, that sounds like a great idea. They film the penis job. We go to Vegas. We shoot the movie where they film part of Casino at. This big, nice house. Tabitha Stevens is who does the scene with it. She was sexy. He falls in love with her over the course of this movie. I understand why. following around like a puppy. Uh Uh-huh. And she has some bomb stuff, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Okay, Tabitha has to be up there on Girls, because I shot so many movies with Tabitha. She was a contract girl for Gabor for Heat Wave. I used to shoot Tabitha all the time. Tabitha would be up there in my most memorable Girls in Porno. She was great. I shot her so many times. Great. And she really was an infomaniac. She we was talk fun. about the blonde. With the fake tits. Right, she yeah, was slim all, but sexy. Yeah, we all love Tabitha. She had a fat one. She was wonderful, yeah. Yeah. Well, Tabitha was great. So anyway, he falls in love with her, and but he's got this huge cock, and it was, it couldn't really get hard. It was, but then again, it wasn't really a performer, so. Yeah. But those co- those penis jobs disappeared. Yeah. They were ugly, huh? Well, they didn't work. So, so the first one, did he do his job for the Bobbit? We got through the scene. Uh, barely. Yeah. We got right. through the scenes. He got hard enough, and Tabitha was all over. Maybe one of those, they'd be in the room for an hour, and I'd come running in with the camera to get some footage. You know, those type of scenes. You know, people don't know about the rates, you know, of the talent. So I just want to fly by that. In the 90s, what was the most you were paying for a girl to work for a boy-girl scene? Okay. No, let's go regular and, rates. And, right, exactly. Because okay. you know that you were doing the... Yeah. Okay, when I got in, amateur rates were kind of... These are pretty standard. Guys, 100 bucks. Girls, 150 Sometimes you get the guy for 50 Sometimes the girl would be 200 But run of the mill, pretty much you get 80 to 90% of your people. 150 for the girl, 100 for the guy. Well, that's cheap, yeah. Very common. Feature uh, rates back then when I got in, typical guy, 300 bucks. Girl, 500. Boy, girl. Uh, nowadays, today, typical girl, typical. Every agent's going to say 1,000 for a boy, girl. And the guy, depending, four to 500 bucks. Now, there's going to be plenty of guys that are 800 bucks or whatever, but you could make a movie very easily paying guys if you wanted just 500 bucks, boy, girl, you know. Good and, guys. Decent guys. Decent guys. Yeah, you know, some are going to want six hundred. I mean, there's other guys going to want eight hundred bucks. So I'm just saying, kind of a standard rate. Some people want a thousand, right? Yeah, but these are there's always going to be outliers. I'm just going to say, what mm-hmm. could you make a movie on? Because okay. I've always kind of been in right, the right. middle. You know. The grinder. I used to grind my ass off. Yeah. Yeah. So, but right now, typically, boy girls a thousand bucks, guys, five hundred. I'd call it. Okay. And so, when you're doing these bukkakis, what's the most you ever paid a girl? Okay, back in the Bukaki days, keep in mind, girls, when you price these things, there's no wear and tear on the girl during the Bukaki. You're paying them boy girls, more wear and tear doing a boy girl. So back in the heyday of the Bukakis, let's say boy girl rates were seven, eight hundred bucks at the time, we were paying the girls seven hundred bucks. Holy moly. Keep in mind, all they were really doing is have cum put on their face. It was a masturbation scene with a free facial. Do you know what you'd have That's to pay? That's great. It sounds like you're selling it. <laughs> pay to have a facial like that? Oh, they should have paid me. Oh, I'm not even that guy. You know what I mean? I, some people really got off on that stuff. I just like, I like girls. You know, I, yeah. I love the girls. So but I, it was easy for the girls though. Yeah. So let me tell you something. One last thing on the Bukakis. When I used to book the Bukakis, here's how I'd book them. Once it got rolling, my rule was, listen, if I... Book the bukkake. I book the girls that were crying, begging me to do it. And what would happen is I'd book three girls every single time. I'd have my main girl and I'd have a couple backup girls just in case that main girl didn't make it or something. And we'd get it hours before. 
so I'd have time to get the backup over there. I used to have girls crying that couldn't do the bakakis. They we hired girls who were for the most part who were dying to do them. They loved it. Wow, I mean, there's some. They loved who, it. Give me an example of the girl who loved it the most. Uh, any name? Fucked. You know, name girl. Uh, well, I mean, we shot so many of Did them. Did Candy Apple do the bukkake? Oh, she's been very the very first yeah. volume of it. Of As course, I would think. You know, yeah. Candy was a pro- Candy loved it. Sasha Knox. Um, my God, you know, you'd have to put them out here in front of me. There's so many of these girls. Holly Welland, remember Holly? Yeah, English. Yes, loved it. Um, I mean, they all loved it for the most part. Very few hated it. Very some of the early days, uh-huh. a few of them hated it. Really? Over, and I'm talking. I probably did. Let's, I don't know, 100, 150 bukkake. Who knows how many nights I did wow, this? Wow, really? That's a lot of. Them. Well, it went out to how many volumes uh-huh. and the gokens and everything. And the what? Gokens. That's What's where that? they swallowed it. Oh. We started cooking the cum and everything like that. We'd cook it in the oh. omelet and stuff. And it actually ah. cooks like eggs. Really? Smells. The smell is horrendous. Ah, yeah, Until you ah, ever cook 70 loads, you haven't smelled anything. Oh, that's just... Ah, that's, um, that's fucking crazy. <laughs> Fuck, man, you're crazy. That's the crazy shit. Yeah, you think that's all the moves I was in and nothing would phase me, but ugh, that's disgusting. Well, that could be on your no list. No cook, cook. <laughs> yeah, let, let's, let's talk about that. Sometimes the girls have a no list, right? Yeah, all the time. So, so what happens when the girl agrees, or let's just say the girl's there, here comes a guy, and she sees the guy, she's like, I don't like this guy. All the time it happens. What do you do? Okay, normally a girl with a no list you know this from producing. You want to know that ahead of time. Any girl that has a no list will usually tell you ahead of time. So, but I have had situations tons of time where the girls on the set go, I won't work with that guy. He's repulsive. He's too old. His dick's too big. Uh, he's an asshole. Whatever. He stinks. He stinks. Believe me. I have that. Yeah. I have great stories on that. You know, that guy smells like, he smells like wet chickens. And I know Jim because I grew up on a chicken ranch. Oh yeah. Yeah. Wow. A girl once said that to me. Um, you, you just got to deal with on a situation situation by situation. You know, like, like if we're stuck somewhere, like, look, you didn't tell me you had a no list. Now, obviously if the guy stinks, I tell him to go shower. I had to do that. If you can solve it, you solve it. I switch the people around. Okay. Maybe you'll fuck Joe over here or not Mel. Mel, you guys want to switch? Mel don't care. He'll fuck her. You know, yeah. a lot of times you can just do that. I don't think the people really know. I mean, in the business, right? Maybe so. Maybe Jeff Mike knows. But to have all this skill, that's what you have, the skill to switch this and that and keep everybody at bay and mellow and not crazy. It's all on the fly, yeah. That is not easy. So you are a very skillful person. Yeah. We, well, it's funny. Another thing in the 90s, we used to get busted by the cops all the time back then, too. Yeah. And there must have been John and we were laughing one time. We must have had cops 30 times, at least 30 different situations. Really? That's- it was crazy. Just yeah. taking stills, just doing this. I mean, or you get on probation again for it. You know, just shit happens, you know. The neighbors call, blah, blah, blah. Neighbors, the parking, yeah. the noise, you yeah. know. Yeah, uh, outside, right. A lot of times, you know, the gates lock. You know it's somebody that knows something's going on. You don't let the cops in, but you got to rap. You know how it is. Yeah, yeah. But you don't have that as much as you used to. There was uh-huh. one house they were busting for a while, Zane's, recently. But it was like in the late 90s, it was, I mean... Johnny, through the years, we were t- trying to add it up one time. We had like literally 30 different cop situations. Really? Just weird shit on sets. Helicopters would literally land down on you and be shooting in the desert, you know, and stuff. We'd just skedaddle. Really? You know, the cops all <laughs> rolling in or getting out of a house right before the all of a sudden all the cops are put, this bar we're shooting at right after we left. You know, one of the guys is still there waiting for everybody. He goes on a phone. He goes, Yeah, right after you left, five cop cars pulled in. You know, it was like, Used to have a lot more of that. Lately, they quit doing that, which is nice. I mean, just lately, last ten years, last five years, last, last ten years, you don't see it as much. And it would just be the neighbors they would call. There was more of the. It's not like you're really doing anything, being loud, but any sort of noise thing. You had neighbors calling, and they had more of a, a task force to try to bust these things. I think for permit issues. Mm-hmm. And you, L.A. Uh, really I, laid off that. I, think. I remember. Yeah. I, yeah. Of course, I was in the prime. Yeah, of- it was just permit issues. It was, it's not like they're they're going to take you to jail. 
Well, and you'd have to talk your way. You'd have to shut down. Yeah, they were yeah. usually cool. Well, the neighbors always were mad because you're too important next to their yeah. house. Yeah. The Valley, San Fernando Valley, that's what this is all about. Yeah, it was parking issues and yeah. stuff. It's not like you were in the street filming fucking. It'd be parking, and right. you're like, why are they here? Yeah. You know? Let me, so you're, you know, you're a powerful producer because you've, you know, you know everybody. You have the money. You know, you've been make, doing the money. You're the money man for the last 25 years. Right? Pretty much back and forth. Yeah, well, no, I generally have companies years. give me the money to shoot no, it. But, you know, yeah. you're the one in charge. Right. Right? Yeah, but most of the time, yeah. You have fringe benefits. You know what I mean? How many times have girls come on to you because they need some work? Uh, girls don't come on to me. Come on! <laughs> <laughs> you plead the fifth. <laughs> I plead the fifth on all of that. I, I plead the fifth. That's. <laughs> I'm married. On, I can't talk about that stuff. Okay. I can talk the pre marry stuff, but you can't. <laughs> well, you're looking through a red, man. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Don't worry. I, <laughs> I understand. It's just boring stories anyway. <laughs> so, um, do you remember, for me, I'm going to say it this way, how great world modeling was i loved it See, here we will never have that again we had a place you could go down to all the talent would pass through there especially in those days and as a producer you could hang out there with jim and look at his <laughs> damn polaroid books beautiful books and, and, and these polaroid books he used to have on the desk and you wait for people to come in the office or whoever was hanging out looking for work and everything and you could, it was just a place to hang out at it's never going to happen again. Never. It's over. No. But it was, for me... It was a great place. Unbelievable. So Jim was the perfect guy for that. He's great. So he had this mentality. He was just so... He could be so mellow. Yeah. He just sat above the fray. Yeah. Imagine the bullshit he had to deal with, too. Huh? Yeah. See, I couldn't do that. See, I Look, I've always told people I could never be an agent. Yeah. Look, I shoot the movies and deal with... You know me for years. Yeah. And... I'm going to do my job, and then I don't want to know about your life. I don't want to get a phone call because your boyfriend beats you up, and I have to put you up somewhere. Agents have to deal with this. Oh, my God, yeah. I don't want to get a phone call because my girl showed up on your set and passed out, or my girl showed up there and didn't want to work with Mel, <laughs> or whatever, because he's ugly and he stinks. Right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, I couldn't do it. All the stuff. He was so great, but the office, the environment... Chaz, remember pretty Chaz? Oh my god, yes. She was beautiful. I have a funny Chaz story. Yeah? One time, Dale's, Dale Davis, remember I told you the stories? Uh -huh. Dale would do the movies for me, how I really got going in porn. So we throw a party over there. We used to throw Super Bowl parties there. Two, three years in a row, we did a Super Bowl party. At Jim's? At Dale's house. At Dale's, okay. And we'd have all the porn people come over. We'd have these wild parties. Uh -huh. So he had this jacuzzi. And everybody's in the jacuzzi. They're getting on. It's going to be wild, right? You know, we're all in there. Everybody's here. You know, Chaz is all drunk. And he had this, like, it was like an orange tree, a little orange tree. It was the oranges or something. She grabs the orange tree. Keep in mind, it's in the big dirt tub. And starts trying to shove the orange in her pussy, which is on the branch. Chaz? The beautiful Chaz? Chaz? Beautiful Chaz. And, the, and the, the whole thing falls into the jacuzzi. The jacuzzi goes black. From the dirt, she pulled the whole orange tree into the goddamn jacuzzi. Wow. Ruined the jacuzzi for the night. For the party, you had to have it cleaned That's out. So stopped the whole flow. Yeah, that is, the orgy did not break out because you know what happens. Now the homeowner's jail's flipping out. You know, oh, she's ruined yeah. the jacuzzi. She's all drunk. You know, yeah. party foul. You know, next I know David Lords is passed out and Dave Hardman is getting a hard on dropping on his forehead for Polaroids. <laughs> It was one of those nights there. I, I have a story, of Chaz. One time we're at one of these parties, and this, you know, I was always chasing her because I thought she was Chaz beautiful. and Dizzy. Yeah, right. Dizzy, her fiance, whatever. And she was finally a moment that one day she came on to me, right? The one night. And I don't know what happened. Something happened, and I didn't do my job, right? Which is very rare for me. Right. And I still regret it to this day because. Did she only do girl girl for a while? She she never did a scene with anybody except Dizzy. Anyway, right. I shot her in lesbian scenes. Right, yeah, but you know, no boys, no boy girls, only Dizzy. Anyway, she was great, and I later she was, did though. Did she? I shot her pregnant. Wow, really? 
Oh, she did some stuff after. Is she? After Dizzy or something, huh? Yeah, because they broke up, remember? I don't know. Yeah, later they broke up. She must have left gyms, and after she left gyms, I don't know where she was. I, I have memories. Of she, it's kind of funny you're bringing names from the past, but I remember, I thought I shot her with somebody like Johnny or something. I don't know, yeah. After they broke up, because Dizzy got Johnny the who? thrust. My old production manager for 10, 15 the glasses, years. right? Yes. Yeah. Male talent. You right. knew Johnny. Everybody knew Johnny. Yeah, he's a nice guy, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Very vague, right? Yeah. yeah, but he was an actor, male talent. Yeah. That wasn't a real performer, but just... Thousands of scenes, yeah. probably. Okay. He was always fucking. He was he okay. was truly okay. a nymphomaniac. Oh, yeah? All right. He'd leave the set and go pick up a hooker on the way home. Really? Well, God bless his soul. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he was a maniac. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. So anyway, so Jim's office was great. And you know what is right here to the right? What? That that right there. I that, can see it. That board. I have no idea. What is it? That is Jim Sal's talent roster where we kept all the information of what actors were working that particular month. Yeah, these are here, here, excuse me, Peter Nord, Mark Goldberg, Tom Byron, St. Croix. I, I don't know that St. Croix, but maybe not. I don't know. The TT. I mean, oh my God. that's wild, huh? He, he let me have it because, you know. For me to get on that board, and he just write on the on the, on the yeah outside. he write those are the dates one through thirty one. Yeah, so no, I get you the month. Yeah. So, but where are the days? Oh, I guess he did care about the days of the week. Yep, amazing, right? He gave that to me. Holy. Fuck. Anyways, he was the best. I mean, he's still alive. God bless him. His his birthday party's coming up. You got to be there. I'm coming back from Arizona that day. I'm gonna try oh. to come over when I get back. It's eighty years old. All right, so um, so you worked with a guy named TT Boy. Okay. Right? How was he to work with? TT. I don't know if TT was a loose cannon or not, but yeah, yeah. TT was a great performer, but people were really worried about pissing him off. You know, oh yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. You were you were known for your temper and stuff. Really? Yeah, yeah. Everybody, everybody knew that, but you were always a good performer, and you're like, but see, I always saw you as Buck's buddy because I was his producer. Uh huh. So you were like. Was, or Buck's buddy. You're we like it was always Buck always had a buddy, and you were it for a lot of those movies. So um, you were good. See, I never had problems with people saying you were too rough or anything. Huh. So, but I didn't shoot you a whole lot, so I just knew you through Buck and everything like that. My wife knew you, you know. But the actors were scared of me, kind of. Yeah, well, you know, you were the tough guy. I knocked out a lot of people. Uh, you knocked out uh, who was that agent? Oh, he's not. not that's embarrassing. Yeah. Oh, oh no, no, Derek? No, not Derek. I slapped Derek. Before. Reagan. Reagan Center. Yeah, I feel bad about that. But uh, anyways, <laughs> that's terrible. Anyways, that's not. It was I, funny. Yeah, yeah, you were a hero when you did it to Derek. Yeah, I really yeah. liked it. Yeah. Everybody I loved just slapped that. him. He fell apart. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways, so uh, was I easy to work with? You were fine. As an actor? Yeah. Okay. And, uh, I, even, I even acted with you. Yeah? Are you yeah. saying the. Um, Top Gun? Yeah, we do a scene where I start making fun of you and you want to beat me up in a bar. Because oh, yeah? you flew a plane into Soviet space or something. Oh, yeah? You're Russian or what? No, no. I oh. was a fellow American. Oh, we were okay. in a bar afterwards and you did something. Come on, it was a Buck movie. Yeah, that was great. I, mean, I love Buck. The movies were, he's always wait, trying wait, to make a movie. What about the movie where you were frozen in time or something and you came back? Do you remember that one? Uh-uh. We did a movie where you were frozen in time. And, and this is the science one with Holly Body you're talking about. I know really? what it was. Oh, that? Yes. It was a, it was a ripoff of some Mel Gibson movie. Oh, yeah? And she oh. aged and he didn't or something. Huh. But that's what basically what it was loosely based upon. Anyway. Hmm. Well. Yeah, okay. guys are afraid of you. Yeah? Yeah. All right. That sounds like fun. It was great being... Uh, <laughs> Being feared, you know, it was a great time. And it wasn't like I was out street fighting. I was street fighting all over the place. But um, you did a boxing thing once yeah, with, with somebody. With was... Biff, he just held on to me the whole time. Oh, so he was actually boxing you? Yeah, no, I dropped him once, but um, you know, I, I didn't do it as good as I should have. But you know, you know, he, I should have knocked him out because he really didn't have any skills. So I feel bad not knocking him out. But anyways, you know, I should have sparred more. My mistake. But um. Before the fight, you know what I mean? Right. So, you shoot 
all these scenes. I want to know how many scenes now do you think you've shot? I couldn't even answer that. I mean, you got to average it, you know? Okay, here, here's something funny. I shoot now more days. I mean, just constant days shooting than I ever have in my life. Huh? That's crazy. Because uh-huh. everybody used to think I was so busy in the early 2000s. Uh-huh. And I was. I mean, some of those days were... But what we do is I pile, like, Gabor, for instance, we, I used to do lots of black movies. Black men, black women, not interracial. Mm-hmm. We used to actually make that back then. We used to do sometimes eight scenes in a day because we'd run two cameras for Gabor. We shoot. Eight, I mean, see, that's a lot of that's a lot of that's stuff crazy. going on. That's yeah, beautiful. We would do eight sex scenes a day. It'd be yeah. Tony, everybody, Byron, Weed. You know how all these guys? Yeah. They used to do a couple scenes. Cuba. Uh, you know all these yeah. characters. Tony, Hercules. Uh, who yeah, was, those Julian real nice. St. Jocks. Yeah, of course. Julian's great. We grew up, you know, me, yeah. Shawn Michaels, and Julian in the early days. Yeah, I'd have all those guys. I mean, I could keep on naming names, but you know them. See, you're the only person I think that could ever keep up shooting wives with me. I used to just go to South America, go to Europe, and I'd shoot the scenes myself, my my movies. I'd shoot twenty hours straight. Yeah, twenty two hours straight. Sometimes I wouldn't sleep, you know, for four or five days. I just had that strength. But you remind me of somebody that might be able to keep up with me. Yeah, I used to like well. I'm really good at kicking into gear around two, three in the morning too. Yeah, I can stay up all night, no problem. Yeah. So, but like, I used to, I used to leave the set. You get there at eight o'clock in the morning, and you know how it was. These features, I'd have to do these one day wonders, the dialogue and everything. Oh, that's rough. Five scenes in a day. You know how the budgets and were. It what if one person is not a point, you're done. The, the actor, I mean. But that's what always would happen. So yeah. you're always waiting on shit. So. And then I'd be leaving at nine o'clock the next morning to my next one was starting. I'm already an hour late for my next day shoot and I uh, haven't slept. See? I was right. I was, I and, and like we would do this. So I used to do things like perverted stories because drink beer and everything, you know, everybody's smoking pot or whatever. All right. And I'd have to make up these movies on the fly. Perverted stories all started because I'd been up for a couple of days and we just went to the desert. Let's just make something happen. Uh huh. And so we just headed out to the desert and just made these crazy stories about hitchhikers and stuff and finding skulls. It was fun and, sometimes, huh? Yeah, like these crazy hillbillies really? chasing people. And we'd always oh, make these cool. ridiculous movies. But yeah, I was just like, I never came home before three in the morning in those days, two, three wow. in the morning. So how many scenes have you shot, do you think? I mean, average it out. Eight scenes in one day, that's a yeah, serious... Yeah, but that was not every day I did that, come on. Yeah. Back in those days, I used to always shoot, back in those days... On average, three, four days a week, every week. Then things slowed down around 2009, 10 or whatever, where I was just mm. doing a couple of days a week. But I started, I've always shot camera and stuff, so I started shooting all this internet stuff. I don't even keep track anymore. I used to. I have no clue. You think maybe you've shot 10,000 scenes? Yeah, I'd have to do the, it's a lot, it's thousands. I mean, thousands. Mm. I have thousands of movies to my name. Yeah. And most movies don't even have my name on it. My name doesn't go on anything anymore. Yeah. So you might have shot 10,000 scenes. I, I had probably 20 different directing names. I was really? Mimo Nasty. <laughs> I was Cool Breeze G. I was Sweet Daddy J. I was uh, Stiv Gators. I was at so many different directing names I went by. Really? Yeah. <laughs> so thousands of movies at least. That's why I think you're the one who's directed the most movies and most scenes. I probably have. In the whole business. That's why I'm... Because I know... That the work ethic that Quasar you have. Quasar is the only guy that's in the last 10 years has probably done more or whatever running neck and neck with me is Quasar. Oh, I, oh yeah, right. From um, I, Quasar. Right, right. Of course. He, yeah. That guy, yeah. he'll do four scenes in a day. Yeah, okay. And he shoots nonstop. Yeah. Uh, zero tolerance, right. Yeah. Yeah, he and he shoots for Wicked too, right? Does he? Okay, I, I don't so. know. Yeah. So but Quasar is really busy, but I can't think of anybody else. And you know, Jake Jacobs was the man way back. You know what I mean? Yeah, but he was always a cameraman. Yeah, only yeah. cameraman, exactly. I'm shooting him in a sex scene next week. Really? Yeah. <laughs> I, I love him. He's a great guy. Yeah. Tell him I said hello. I will. Yeah, he's got a sex scene. I'm, so I'm sure. gonna get him in here too. He was great. Horny Grandpa's number three. Really? Yeah, that's. <laughs> yeah, why don't you have Jake in here? No, I want to get him in here. Jake Crew, by the way, is his directing name. Oh yeah, okay. Or his Porno name. Oh, his actor name. He was yeah. great. But uh, so, I mean, it's 10,000 scenes probably. Yeah, I guess. Because, yeah, I mean, I don't know. You could figure it out, I but guess. But close, so close to that. A lot. Yeah, a lot. So, the most oh, probably. But maybe you're neck and neck with Quasar. So, after all this shooting, do you get aroused by any of these girls ever? Yeah, I still do. Yeah. I mean, certain ones. 
I'm more into not so much the looks of the girl, but how she acts. Yeah. You know, the, and there's certain things you, you like if you're doing like the teen scene or something or right. some, you know, some you don't care about at mm-hmm. all. Uh, right away, you can feel something. You can fi- feel a vibe. Certain girls, yeah. Yeah. You get turned on girls a couple times a week that you really like. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm uh-huh. still always trying to make the perfect scene, so it's oh, like, yeah. you know. Right, right. I mean, I mean, I guess in the end of the day, if you like women, how could you not still be attracted to a young or just a sexy, sexy female that's nice, sweet, and beautiful? Well, here's what you get. As you get older, I notice the girls never change. You know what I mean? You're still getting a, just a new candy apples yeah. or the, the looks. It's they the all have the same look. Change, yeah. yeah, but it's still the same faces. I mean, if you really yeah. look at girls, oh, yeah, yeah. everybody kind of has people that look like them before. Sometimes, or yeah. that type of girl. Okay, she's the wild, crazy party animal who's singing for a rock band. Come on. That wasn't around in the 80s or 90s? We're, we're still always getting the same girl, the, the cheerleader girl, the whatever girl, the girl who was the... We slice herself up all the time. You know what I mean? Uh, With the yeah. real white pasty, white blonde hair. Come on. They're constantly. Yeah, right. It's weird. When you get older, you start seeing it more. You start seeing the same girls over and over. Yeah. I say, oh, my like, God. I shot you 30 years ago. Like certain types, like five to eight different types, kind of the personality, the body, language. Well, I work with a photographer now who's been doing it for a while, too. And he goes, Jim, come here. Who does that look like? I'm like, uh, I don't know. It's Chandler. He'll just throw out a name from the past. You know, uh, you know, uh, it's it's Julianne. I'm like, oh yeah, I see what you mean. You know, kind of spooky, isn't it? But or, or it's Brianna Banks. We, we shot a girl the other day. She looks just like really? Brianna Banks. Yeah, oh, there's crazy. a. Did she have a fat one? Because Brianna Banks had one of the fattest ones around. Well, she had those bit, yeah. And it was unbelievable. No, she does. I'll tell you who it is. Really, Charlie wow, Chaplin. So, that's her name. Charlie Chaplin. But she looks like Brianna Banks. I'm like shooting her. I'm like, oh my god. It's a young Brianna. Really? Huh. Her face, you know, that classic white girl looking face. Right. Almost like a bird. Yeah, you know. <laughs> like English. Brie is just so white. No, but, yeah, but she was unbelievable. Oh, she's amazing. Yeah. I'm just saying the features. I'm talking about you're looking at the girl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. And even the way she but, was really good. But she had, she just was so great, right? That, you know. Brie was great. Yeah. Anyways, so what's your favorite three films that you made, produced, directed, and why? Good Lord. Uh, Perverted Stories, the movie. Texas Chainsaw Masquerade. And probably, just I'm throwing them out there, the first chamber of horrors. Of horrors. Yeah. Those three. Wow. Chamber of horrors. So it was yeah. a horror movie? Or was it just yeah, like- well, it was a, a, a porn that was like a horror porn. Uh-huh. Okay. So... Those are my three favorite. Now, Chamber of Horrors, I thought, okay, this is my all-time favorite movie. Then it, It's so gritty. It's got drama. And then it gets nominated for Comedy of the Year. I was really pissed off. Really? <laughs> it was my serious movie. <laughs> it's, it's a, uh, <laughs> True story. Yeah, no, I, I mean, I don't want to talk yeah. you know, about that. It's those like, awards. Yeah, but like, how many awards have you won? I haven't won them in years, but I, I quit counting at like 36. I really? used to win a lot. Yeah. That was great. But man. you know, movies, I, I counted like a movie, okay, if you won Best Actor for my movie, I go, okay. Okay. Not that I have any of these awards. Yeah. Or if, what, Best Lesbian Movie, I won that like four or five years in a row. But you never got any awards yourself? I have two. Wh- which ones? Jeff Mike would take them all. I have one, I won Director of the Year. Uh, okay. And That's great, really, Director of the Year. That's yeah, I won Director deal. of the Year one year. What year? I don't know. It's that's on a, the award. That's a big deal. An avian? Yeah, avian. Oh, that's a big deal. I won deal. Director of the Year. Yeah. And I won, uh, you know, tons of them. I have tons of, you know, Best whatever scene, most outrageous sex scene. I won that probably four or five times back in the old JM days. Uh, yeah, I don't remember what the scenes were for. I mean, did you like winning the awards? Of course, it's cool getting the award. See, the thing is, I would never get the awards at companies again, so I didn't really care. I've never really been about that type of stuff, yeah. and you know that. Yeah, I've never well, been the type of guy that's really pushing my face. No, ever. Yeah. yeah, you're very subdued, very quiet. Yeah, and I don't care. Yeah. but I mean, it's fun. It's great to be noted. Yeah, it's nice. And, Look at and recognized. Yeah, I, I either like I like you want people to hate you or love you. You know, it's like when you're ignored, you don't want to be ignored, right? So never. Yeah, <laughs> it's the worst. <laughs> you're like nothing. So um, all right, so we uh, we're pretty much moving away from the adult. You know, let's just uh, and you're th- almost thirty years in the adult business, right? It's twenty seven years. 
practically 28 years? 30, yeah, yeah, we're right. approaching 30. You know, what do you have to say about all this time in the biz? I mean, do you have like a couple words that will describe the okay. experiences, events, and wins and losses, you know? Okay. The way I look at it, I tell everybody, I never left 13th grade. I never, I didn't plan on being in porn. Like when I first got in, I was saying in the beginning, I several times I thought, oh, I'm just going to make a movie. That's it. Make a movie. Oh, that's it. That's it. And then you got kind of sucked in. And then, you know, well, that's how you're making your living and everything. And then you're doing really well for a while. And it's just like, it's, it's one of those things you can't, I, can, I think I have a good attitude because I forget about things. I don't let things bother me. And I really look at it as like being in 13th grade. This is like being in high school that never ended. It's, it's great. forever. Great. And I see people, I mean, I, it's almost, I guess, most of what it must have been like being in Vietnam or something. You know, talking about you people just keep on passing through. Yeah. You know what I mean? And you're still here, yet they all look the same. Yeah. <laughs> the girls, it's always 19, 20 year old girls, they always look the same. And it's only the guys you kind of develop any sort of camaraderie with because uh -huh. the guys last. Uh -huh. And they become the directors and the people you, you know, you know how it is, that stay around. Yeah. There's not too many girls that really stayed the long haul. Nina Hartley. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, she's still here. Yeah. Julianne, maybe. Yeah. I mean, I mean, as far as I'm talking about girls that, you know, some of them gone on to be directors, like Gia Paloma, who I, I'm her cameraman, who's directing today, has been around. 18 years now, I guess. Right. But, I think I heard her name, maybe. But a lot of, it's like, yeah, they just come and go. Everybody around you in this business comes and goes real fast. Yeah. I mean, I got 27 years, you know, that I kind of dipped out. Yeah. You started when? 89. 89. And you quit when? Well, I... Well, you get the company the, forever. Yeah, I have my company forever. So in 16, I kind of started... When you quit on. performing? Huh? When did you oh, stop? I quit performing... 2006. Wow. Why? Because I was too busy running my company. You didn't want to have like your own line, like TT Spotlight Auditions? No, test I was running everyone. my own company. I had, yeah. you know, I was, well, we were produced, my company, Evasive Angle, TT Boy Productions, right. Bubble Butt Inc., and then Love's Kitty. You know, I was producing 20 something movies a month. So I had to, you know, I was a hands on, so I didn't have time to perform. I could still perform fine. You know, I probably could. Still do three or four scenes a day, but um, I was too busy running a company. And I was focusing right. on my company and making sure it, it all worked like a well-oiled machine. You could always start it up again. It's like you own all the stuff. You just gave away the DVDs. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I have what fifteen hundred, sixteen hundred titles. Jesus Christ, you put yeah. in a lot of shit. No, I made a lot of movies. I pioneered. People don't even know I pioneered the mothers and daughters. Came up with that stuff in two thousand five and made it in action. Nobody was doing it or thought of it. They did Taboo way back, but it wasn't Mothers and Daughters. I can't believe you did Roots. And it was long gone. I did Roots, yeah. <laughs> but I mean, yeah. I did a lot of movies, but a lot of stuff, you know. Anyways, is there anything you would like to say to all the people, you know, the talent, the producers? You know, you're the producer, but you worked with other producers. Sure. The talent, the producers, the companies, you know what I mean? I mean, you went, you've had a long journey. Right. What is there any message you want to say to all the people? I mean, it's kind of hard to generalize, but is there one message you could say before you leave? It's it's not for everyone. I mean, that's why I tell most people that try to get in this. It's like you got to you got to have the right mentality. I mean, I think part of the thing with adults is you for everybody that enters this business is you cannot take it too seriously, but yet you have to take it seriously. You can't take yourself too seriously because you're still making porn. It should be fun. You yeah. got to have more fun with. It. I think it's become very corporate, very serious, yeah. and I think okay. it chews up a lot of people a lot more quicker than it used to be. Before. Really, I don't know. It's become very corporate. It's very serious, soulless, very soulless. It's changed a lot. We had a family back then, kind the, of. Well, the '90s were a very crazy time. I think in some ways, I wasn't around the '80s, but I hear all the stories you know from people. I think in some ways, the '90s was got a lot more crazier than the '80s because it wasn't as limited as the '80s were. Yeah. You were stuck on what type of cameras you were shooting on and what uh -huh. the content was and the delivery systems where the 90, 90s was the era that really opened up a lot of that stuff, but it hadn't gone full-fledged into the internet where it just destroyed it and made it soulless like it has. 
You know, I mean, the 90s was still, it was really expanding. You had ways to put out stuff. It wasn't just amateur and just feature. You had all this new type of stuff that was coming out. And yeah, you know, people were shooting on smaller cameras and doing these crazy things and running around all over the place. It was legal in California, so they're pushing the envelope. And it was just a crazy era. Mm-hmm. And you just don't have that anymore. It's become much more soulless. So anyway, what message I think I have is people just can't take it as seriously as they do it or... You know, you got to be serious, but you can't... I just think people go overboard and taking the fun out of it. And, and why else are you doing porn? Yeah. Well, money and fun, you know? Yeah. I did it for fun, but... Yeah. I did it for fun, but money, and it became a way to make money. Yeah. And I don't know. It's just like a lot of it's become very soulless. You know, I don't need to tell you that. You know that. Oh, yeah. It's turned it's, into very... Oh. Well, I hired some actors. What... Three years ago, right about the you know, and and the the actors that I used to use had nothing but complaints about how much time it took and how this and that, and they were not the same people that I once knew. Right. They didn't appreciate the beauty of the doll business and the fact you're getting paid, you know, right. money to have sex with a pretty girl, most pretty girls, you know, and have a good time. So things had changed. The last time, you know, we used people. It was not the same. And people, I think, lost the actors. Because I'm an actor. You know, I'm like, basically, I'm a performer, you know, right. who, you know, made it far. You know, I'm the only performer to become a successful distributor and all that and, and pioneered black porno, really. And I was a performer at heart. And, yeah, sometimes you get burnt out, but you got to remember that you're getting paid to have sex with a lot of pretty girls. Right. And it's unbelievable. It's like a, it's just really hard to believe, but you know, so I seen that that's been lost. Do you agree with me? I totally, you got these guys who shoot this many sets. They act like it's just such work. Mm -hmm. It's turned into, but the agents, it's everything about it. You don't have the same mentality you have with those girls. Yeah. It's changed. It's a heartbreak a little bit, huh? It's gotten very boring. Yeah. It's a lot more boring than it used to be. You gotta have love. Yeah. And the, it's the last five years, it's just become, ex- it's, work has really been blowing up. It's like, I don't know what's going on out there. It's like so much work now. Wow. Try to book a location. Try to book a makeup artist. Really? It's that crazy. Really? Wow. I was trying to book up a makeup. Everybody... I need a second makeup artist for something in two weeks. I tried seven makeup artists. Oh, shit. It's just so much work, but it's turned into the soulless type of thing, you know. And for the most part, most they're just used to being done by four o'clock. You know how it is. It's like, it's it's changed. I'm telling you. It really has changed. It's not, and we all say, every old guy says, it's not like it used to be, but it really isn't. The 90s really were a crazy period for porn. What was it? I mean, I mean, I was such a spoiled, yeah. lucky, you know. Nineties were fun, motherfucker. I mean, I just guess I had the time of my life with. I got to do whatever I wanted to do, and I, yeah. So, did you get involved in a little bit of drugs here and there? Oh yeah, I always have done that type of stuff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Who did it? I mean. <laughs> I'm like I've always been a drinker. I've always been a partier. Yeah, yeah but you're the valley man, party time. Yeah, but it's not like I'm. But I've never been addictive. I'm not one of those guys that uh-huh. you know, you know. Like, so you do like a line of coke or whatever. You do some ecstasy. You know, you have to go every single night forever on it. You know what I mean? Right, right, right. So right. I've always, yeah, I've always, I've always been known for that. You know that. Right, I never knew that. No, no I man, I never. I was always, you know, I always mind my own business. Really, right. you know what I mean? Yeah, but, but I was never a big, like, whatever type of guy, you know. Really? But, yeah, yeah I've been known as, like, a partier. Well, that's cool. So you had a great time. Yeah, <laughs> still. So, so did you party with some of the girls? Tons. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what kind of stupid question is that? I'm a porn director. I mean, come on. There's certain things you... It's like, it's, come on, AVM. It's a, you know, people go out there just to party for the only reason. But even the sets or weekend parties or shit, you know, it's uh-huh. like... Well, people, I mean, you're a really sociable and nice person, yeah. so I just see people, you know, inviting you to every party. I don't really go to that many. People think I do. 
I show up every once in a while, but I don't really go to that many parties anymore. But then again, like a lot of times, it's, look at my sets are a lot more relaxed too. So it could be more, you know, kickback. You're 21 years old. I don't care if people are, you know, have a drink here and there, some of them, you know. Let's move on to some trending events. Okay. Something interesting. What happened to Epstein? What? Epstein, the guy who got killed? Yeah. He was killed. By who? They said he, he, you know. And I hate to use that term they because you sound like you're some one of these freaks or whatever, but uh-huh. come on. He was killed. He was killed? What's it? He's not going to be able to kill himself. They're not going to have him anything in there, give him anything and kill himself. And what the guards were sleeping, people within power did not want him rolling and throwing out names. And that's the whether facts. it's Hillary, whether it's the Clintons or whoever involved, come on. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. In it's, my opinion. I, I th- I'm with you. That's impossible to, for him to kill himself. He's worth billions of dollars or a billion dollars, whatever. And you have a good way to get out with all that money. So somebody's going to take you out. Right. But I read it on the internet that it said the Hillary, I mean, not, excuse me, the Clinton body count was 140 now. Or is it now 141? Supposedly everybody that's ever crossed or whatever is dead. Yeah. That's really scary. I mean, there's some gangsters for sure. But, um, all right, so I'm going to move on to another one that interests me. I want to see what your opinion on it is. You know, it's wild, away from porn, but may have, you might be involved later on. Okay. You never know. Okay? So, I don't know if you heard about it, but what do you think about moon mining? Mining on the moon? Yep. Why not? I mean, I've not really heard much about it, but why not? What are they going to mine for up there? What do they see? Yeah, I'm going to tell you. The outer surface is covered with regolith, regolith, a dust which accumulates from billions of years of meteor and comet impacts. (laughs) It is so rich in metals, whoever lives there can use this alone to build cities. Just that alone is there to, to do all kinds of stuff. But helium-3, helium-3, is the major mineral there, or gas mineral. And it is worth $5 billion a ton. Right? And it can be used for fusion, for energy, nuclear energy. That's wild. $5 billion a ton. Okay? There is more than 1 million tons available on the moon. Who's going to get there first to get that money? Musk. No, I don't know because Musk doesn't have the money of Russia or let me move on. But yeah, are you well, how's that sound to you? It sounds amazing. We should be mining on the moon. That's crazy, right? Right. Have you heard us? You never heard about this, huh? No. 5 billion dollars a ton. So why the hell did we disband the space program or stop the space program once we went to the moon? Well, let's, uh, let's add, I'm going to move on here. It says here, the moon is also loaded with scandium and ytridium, which is used for electronics, boards and stuff like that. It's a metal, minerals, metals. Okay? Who's the biggest manufacturer of the world? Well, if I know. Well, you know, the biggest manufacturers in the world is, from what I see... Obviously, is USA, China. 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 Right. Right. So, China has already landed on the moon twice this century. But yet, we've disbanded our program. Thought that... What do you think about that? I think we need a space program. We should be up there. I mean, it's a little strange. Why, you know... India, China, and Canada state they are interested in robot mining there. They're talking about it with uh, robots, you know, you know right. the robot, anyway, robot mine. Europe has declared they will start mining by 2025 on the moon surface. 
don't we want to get some money too? <laughs> yes. Okay. I mean, what is that? That what do you think about that? Well, I think we should be on the moon. I'm all for the space race and all that stuff anyway, so we should be doing it. <laughs> to me, it sounds like a great recipe for war. Yeah. Who's gonna own the neighborhood? Right? Yeah, once you get a couple people up there. I mean who you know, like whoever gets there is gonna make trillions. Yeah. Right? And own power, fusion power. What is that going to do for... Yeah, you set up a, a whole like military base up there. Set up a big laser and... <laughs> I don't know, right? In any case, I, thought that, I found that kind of wild. And they say that um, asteroids floating close by or, you know, around the galaxy, right. whatever. You know, they just float, right? Sure. Kind of, they just floating around there. They are said to be loaded with concentrated iron and nickel and precious metals. So it's like you got these big Well, there's got to be so much stuff out here. When do you know the space well, stuff? Yeah, I'm going to show you. This, huh? <laughs> what are you doing? Yeah, I, just want, I just want to bring this out of the blue and see your opinion. Look. Because it's leading to one point. We should have always, we should have never, dis we should, look at, one thing, when I was a kid, High school, circa, there was a TV show on about Mars, us putting people on Mars. At the time, the technology, they said, I always remember this, that the technology of 1979, we could have a self-sustaining, whatever, surface on Mars in 100 years. Why didn't we pursue that? Because if that year's technology of 79, 100 years, and you know what technology is like now, and they obviously it would have been probably self-sustaining by now on Mars mm -hmm. if we would have gone up there. Why didn't we do that? I mean, I've heard stories. You know, I have a uncle and that's, that's Mars. Same thing with the moon. The mining is. Yeah, it's like I don't know enough. It's not like I read about it. But as far as you want, as a country, you have to stay ahead on this type of stuff. Okay. You have to. But we aren't. I know. Does, I, does that make you a little irritated? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we should have stuck with the moon, you know, the whole space race. You know, I, it's like, who's going to be entitled to the moon's riches? Who, so let's just say that we know that whoever gets there first, Europe says they're going to be there. Who do you think is going to make it there first? Well, from what you said, China. Well, the Europe says they'll be there by 2025. So why don't we send somebody up tomorrow? Uh, well, I mean, I heard stories that it, people are mining out there already. That's what I heard. But, um, you know, okay, so let me tell you about this one. This is really blew my mind. Did you know Obama signed a law that grants U.S. citizen rights to own resources mined on the moon? Pack your bags, Jim. Let's go. How the hell are you going to get there? Do you believe that? That's wild, right? Yeah. That's true. That's true. So you actually signed that? Yeah. Well, that was obviously for the Elon Musks of the world. Probably right. Because it says Elon Musk is... No, Elon Musk wants to go to Mars. He's sending out a... Uh, what's he sending out? A, um, well, Mars, you have a chance to make oxygen. Yeah? Yeah. That's what I was getting at. Like... I always remember... The, there was a TV show in the late 70s. I mean, you might remember. It was about... People living on Mars, and I don't know how long it lasts. It was on NBC, and uh, anyway, there's a, a whole thing on the news. I remember as a kid watching this in high school, going, "Whoa, yeah. why the fuck aren't we up there on Mars, having people up there?" I, I heard some crazy shit, which is probably bullshit, but I heard there was a wormhole here in America, which doesn't make much sense, where they can get to Mars. To a wormhole, yeah. like a vortex. Yeah. Gail and me went looking for vortexes. That's where we were. We were in Egypt last year. Uh -huh. We went to see the vortexes. You were in Egypt. Yeah, we were in Egypt. I was in, in Cairo. And yeah, I was there. Sharm El Sheikh and I, I went to uh, God. I was just told I flew into Luxor. Oh yeah, I went down to Luxor. We did. Uh, we flew into uh, what's the name of it? Ath uh, no, Ath Cairo. I was just in Greece too. Uh, uh, Cairo. Flew into Cairo, and then we went down to. Something and we ended up in Luxor because we flew back to, to Cairo from Luxor and we were in somewhere else too because we went to the Nile 
trip and all that stuff. But we went by all the Valley of the Kings and all that type Karnak of stuff. Temple? Yeah, I saw all this stuff. Uh, I was I went, there. I went everywhere, all over the place. I have tons of pictures. Beautiful, right? We were up to Alexandria, you name it. Hot we, as hell. If you were there in the summer, you could burn yeah, your ass Okay, off. I'll tell you one thing. I thought that. Guess what? It's no hotter than here. Well, I went at a different time of year, and it was hotter. Okay, I went last September. Yeah. Literally a year ago, almost. Uh-huh. A year ago, almost to the day. I left on the opening day of the football season last year. Football season open Sunday. Uh-huh. So I left a year ago on Sunday. Uh-huh. It was the same temperature. It's like L.A., but remember how hot it was last summer. Yeah. It was like 110 probably, and, yeah. and, you know, whatever. It wasn't any hotter, but it's very dry, mm. really dry. Yeah. It, it is hot. I'm not saying it's not hot, but if you're if you're living in L.A., go visit Cairo. The heat's not going to kill you. Oh, yeah, no. Uh, for me, I grew up working in the mines, but um, in Death Valley when I was a kid, six years old. So it was nothing. You know, open pit mining. So big deal. I'll take 120 all day. So um, where's the vortex? What? Oh, anyway, there's vortexes. And you go to these energy sources like in Sedona and stuff. And they say right. you can Every feel summer. energy. And you go out there. We were at these rocks and trying to feel the energy laying out there. Uh-huh. And the vortexes, the big ones, are in Cairo and stuff or in the temples or, or in the uh, pyramids. That's Did why you go people inside? go in. Oh, yeah. I went inside all of them. Uh-huh. Oh yeah, we were. It's like about that tall. They yeah, they get all crunched down in there, and yeah, if you're claustrophobic, it's not good to go around in those things because it's because they're designed for people like five feet tall or something. Because we were hunched over going through some of these things. Yeah, show me a picture. I, I, I might have something funny to show you, since albums. Okay. So it says here, Elon Musk has plans to send an unarmed mission to Mars, and others want to build the first human settlement there on, on Mars. So. That's interesting. Look at that. Look at that. We're running around in the tombs in there. That's cool. So this is Valley of the Kings, or this is the... This is not Car- Valley of the Kings. This Valley, is the- Valley of the Kings are all uh, tombs. These but, were not tombs. The pyramids were not tombs. Well, the one, one of them uh, in Valley of Kings goes so far back, you know, that I checked out. Yeah. King Ramses go yeah. way back. Oh, so it's beautiful. Look but, at it here. See, that was going, that's inside a pyramid, for instance, what you just saw there. You're talking about more stuff like. Uh, so you're, so that's inside the big pyramid? The big center no, monster. No, that's not the, the big one. It's a different We went in that one too. That one wasn't that impressive. Yeah. Wait, it was do I have? Hot in there, huh? I, mean, I mean, here's just driving around all these places. Oh, yeah, that's cool. Uh, when I went there, it was like literally, it's weird. It was like nobody there. Really? Yeah, wow. it was like we had the place to ourselves. Huh. It was really? shockingly quiet. Do I have wow. like? Must have been this time of year or something. It was um, a lot of no. What it is, they just went through. A, I can't find. I, have, I got tons of these videos. They're just all over. That's the, the Karnak videos. Temple, yeah. huh? But what happened is in 2014. Um, Remember, it became, um, look, in terms, it, it's it's now open to Westerners again. It just became oh, opened yeah. up again because okay. what happened is it went under strict Muslim rule, and Westerners oh. were not allowed in. Oh, really? I didn't know that part, but I know there was a lot of war going on, right? Yeah. We, you were not allowed to go there. Yeah. It's just opened up to Westerners. Oh, okay. So there's no Americans really there. Uh-huh. None of the French go there anymore. Scary. All you have is Russians coming over and Chinese. Uh-huh. And we were some of the only Americans because everybody quit going. Because what happened is when you had the Arab Spring that took place in 2011, they remember the fundamentalists took over. Uh-huh. And then now it's gone more into a, a nationalism versus an Islamic approach, more of a, a, a nationalist uh, Arab thing where it's okay, we can bring other people in, even though you're not Muslim. We're not going to kill you because you're not Muslim or, you know. Uh-huh. Whatever. I'm using the wrong terms. But basically, it just got opened again. Okay. Just so you know, just a couple of years ago. That's why. But whatever. We were checking out the vortexes. You start Anyways. talking about wormholes and stuff. So, They're energy sources. And that's supposedly why they were built there. That's what a lot of that goes. Supposedly, the pyramids were built there because these vortexes, which are like the wormholes and stuff. Really? That's why. Yeah. So maybe it's true. Maybe there is. Some, that'd be some cool shit. There's right? another vortex you can see in. Um, in England, over by Stonehenge, it's near yeah, there. Really? And hmm. It's where they, uh, the Knights of Templar supposedly took uh, the Holy Grail. Really? Although they say the Holy Grail actually ended up somewhere in Pennsylvania. Really? 
does it sh- like the grail is like a real deal. Yeah. Huh. Well, I like to see it. <laughs> <laughs> I drink, right? But um, so here's what I was getting to. So after all this, it looks to me like we're going to be on the moon in our lifetime for sure. We should. We were on the moon in 68. Right. So we're going to get there. And I think it's going to be possible that you are going to be the first man to shoot porn on the moon. (laughs) That'd be great. (laughs) Right? I can see it now. We walk into a bar, me and you, right? Walk into a bar, and we see some alien hookers, right? Right. And I, you know, say, whoa. And you're saying, TT, I got the camera, let's go. (laughs) And I say, okay. (laughs) <laughs> what do you think? No, but for real. Imagine that, the moon possibly being like a, a stop for ships, just like Star Wars. Right. And inside there, you have some alien hookers who look different, but they got better skills. They're not as lazy as America. Well, it's look, at that stuff is going to happen if it's not happening already. Yeah. It cannot be the only life no. force in this valley, in this entire galaxy. It doesn't make any sense. Are you down to shoot on the moon? Yeah, I'd go. What the hell? Why not? <laughs> Jim, wild man, powers. Thank you so much for the beautiful interview. You're a wonderful. Thanks for having me. And um, it was nice to see you. Nice seeing you again. All right. All right. Take care. Peace, TT Boy TV.